All right, so we're going to be checking out something that's, uh, I don't know if they want to label it a fan game or I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, this is from Zero X Diamond. Uh, Zero X Diamond did uh, a fantastic, memorable level in the Doom competition. Um, Zero also submitted, uh, or submitted, um, but did a really, really funny ROM hack of, of um, <laughs> Garfield. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, this has been long awaited. It's uh, Garbage Field Saves Christmas. Uh, and I, I, I assume this game was actually just like um, its own thing, but it's actually a, a game for the the uh, Sega Master System. I did not expect that, but uh, regardless, we're going to be checking it out, see what it's all about, and uh, yeah, but uh, funnily enough, Xerox Diamond uh, gave me this, um, this emulator that I've never heard about. Uh, I was like, fuck, what was it called? Mecha. Mecha. And it crashed my PC, so I had an extensive BRB where I'm like, Man, it's, everything's crashing, so I, I opted in to use RetroArch instead, so, you know. Anyway, uh, without further ado, we're going to read the manual here. I should probably put this on screen as well so we can uh, take it all in. Uh, Garbage Field Saves Christmas, official user and strategy guide. Game information. Garbage Field Saves Christmas is best described as sort of a visual novel. Okay. A game that's also a choose-your-own-adventure. This game is very easy to play. You simply use either of the number buttons on the Sega Master System controller to advance the text at the bottom of the screen. Then, then when presented with a set of choices, uh, select the one you want to be using. Okay, well, let's see here. Uh, while it's a dirt simple game, remember the dirt can hide a lot of things. Deep down beneath, GCX, or GCC, sorry, Garbage Field Saves Christmas, because there's no less than 365 unique images spread across. Damn, that's a lot. Dozens of different story paths. There are many different roads to take. But while some paths lead to some something resembling victory, only one ending. It's the real one. Can you find it? Well, shit. Um, as a quality disclaimers, while I have squashed every bug I'm capable of fixing myself, there are several problems that are part of the game engine or the engine that I'm using that I sadly cannot avoid at the present. The engine, Sam, is frankly pretty poorly put together, and as there are very obvious memory issues at times, the follow bugs are the only ones I'm more I can fix. Okay, um, interesting. Uh, a lot of random crashes, apparently. So a lot of saves, I, I guess. Um, the best advice I can give you regarding this is to save state before making choices. The bugs can literally be avoided most of the time by simply reloading and trying again. Now, I don't know why the hell that's the case, but just go with it. And I'm sorry I don't realize how buggy this is. Okay, so here's some general tips before we start. Save state when you get to the choices. A hard reset will fix issues with the font getting garbled. Don't mash the buttons to skip through the text. So this is put together by toothpicks and glue. Alright. And remember, as Dwarf Fortress would say, losing is fun. Uh, try everything, even if it sounds like a horrible idea. Okay. Well, everybody, let us play Garbage Field Saves Christmas. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, uh, I am excited. Well, start the game. You, the questionable, lovable garbage field, awaken in darkness, groggily fumbling around in old shoes. You stand up and brush the top of your head on coats. Ah, yes, you slept in the closet again last night. After all, Joel already doesn't like you very much, and, at l and last night he probably tied <laughs> one on. He'll probably think he made a real ass of himself when he edits that out stream. Excuse me? But you thought it was pretty funny, especially the part where he wrote that awful letter to Santa. Calling him a fat old jerk was maybe a bit harsh, but the part where he said that he prefers Satan, Satan's Claws to Santa Claus was pretty clever wordplay for a guy whose brain was swimming in booze. Good thing that that was all a gag, or else he'd definitely have ruined Christmas. Then again, he did... <laughs> he did put it in an envelope and address it and stamped it. And I mean, sure, that was part of the gag too, but he did remember doing that this morning, right? He certainly didn't black out the part of his memory and send it off through the mail, right? Yeah, you better check. Opening the door and stepping out, you rush over to check out and find... Just as you feared! 
Joel totally forgot what was in the envelope and already sent the letter. Oh no, this is terrible. If Joel's Christmas is ruined, he's probably going to blame it on you. And if he blames it, <laughs> and if he blames it, and if he blames, reading, blames it on you, who knows what he'll do. It looks like it's up to you to save Christmas. Garbage field. Do you have what it takes? Are you a bad enough dude to save Christmas? Probably not, but you're probably going to try anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're in Joel's studio apartment. Okay. Thinking of what your next move should be. At this point, you could just be take off or you could take waste time poking around in the house a bit. You probably want to waste some time before saving Christmas, right? Oh boy. Real music, everybody. By the way, my kitchen is smaller than this. Just so you know, it's, it's way smaller. It doesn't even have like a counter. It has like a, a quarter of this. You know. But anyway, uh, listen to some tunes. Check Joel's computer. Let's check my computer. Oh my god. You wander over and sit yourself down in front of. Oh, this is, this is accurate though. Sit in front of Joel's computer. This is the place where magic happens, or as Joel might put it, the place where dreams go to die. That Joel always joking. Anyhow, <laughs> now they're at the computer. What are you going to do? Check my website, peek at Joel's email. Nothing, never mind. This ought to be good. Peek at Joel's email. You know you shouldn't, but hey, what's it gonna hurt? Who's gonna know, right? Turn down just a little bit more. Okay. Right? Without a second thought, you click over to the tab containing Joel's inbox and have yourself a peek. Let's see what we got here. Looks like it's pretty much the same old stuff. Gushing fan letters, angry factual correction. <laughs> uh, people begging Joel to play their favorite highly explicit hentai games. Yeah, pretty much par for the course. Just as you're about to walk away, something catches your eye. Uncle... Uncle Joel, you ruled, you fucking idiot! Pl please play Knights of Zintur! Oh, hey! It's an email from Vark Skelter fan and con contributor, Iron M. Burton. You're not entirely sure, but you just can't get enough of that guy. Oddly, it seems Joel somehow totally missed this one. So you click on it, open and see what it's good old Z ZX has to say. Huh, neat! Apparently it's got the source files and server software some amazing train wreck of an MMORPG from the late 90s There was a cracky, crappy knockoff of Zelda 3. He knows Joel likes Link to the Past and has talked about playing an MMO with Chad and thought this would be a great idea. And apparently he's offered to co-host the stream with him since he knows all about it. And after all, Joel did say he has a really good voice! Dude, what? Dude. No, 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 no. Though he says he's understand if Joel didn't want him, though. <laughs> the email ends with a polite thank you and hopes that he'll hear back soon. He received this email months ago. <laughs> it would be a real shame to just leave this email unanswered since Joel apparently missed it. You can always stand in, for, stand in for him. After all, what can I possibly hurt? Should Garbage Field save fan relations before he saves Christmas? No, but remind. Oh my. Hmm, okay. Listen, listen, it takes me time. It takes me time! Okay. No! Guys, you, you pick. You pick here. You pick him. Yes. I'm gonna say yes. You decide to make to take matters into your own hands and answer the email yourself. After all, it'd be rude to leave a fan hanging. Dude. But how will you respond? Promise to stream with na 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 no 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 this is this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Don't. I'm getting cornered now. I don't like this. I don't like this. Uh Wait, you know you know what? You know what though? You know what? Here's the thing though. It's garbage field sending an email, not me, okay? 
You write the following response. Dear Ian, this is the greatest idea I've ever heard in my entire life. You are so cool and awesome, and I absolutely want to stream whatever game you have to offer and have you on with me. We'd be best friends forever. Also, thank you again for that cool garbage field game and that cool map with garbage field in it. Garbage field is also really great, and I'm also... You made a game about him. Did I already say that we should be best friends forever? Because we should. I will definitely get back to you to plan how we're going to do this in the next few days. You will absolutely be hearing from me. Thank you for writing me and best of luck in your own streaming endeavors. Sincerely, Joel Varkskelter Jarvison. There, that should do it. You're not exactly sure how this is going to pan out, considering you made these promises and not Joel himself. But hey, everything will work out fine, right? What the fuck? It's like... Meta layers of... Ugh, man. Oh shit, I missed some text. Oh damn it. Well, I'm in the apartment. Grab a snack. It's best not to tr <laughs> It's best not to try and figure out how to save Christmas on an empty stomach. So you rummage around the kitchen looking for something to eat. Unfortunately, most of it's in the fridge right now and it's pretty old. Like, as in you're pretty sure the takeout box on the top shelf dates back to the Holy Roman Empire. And that blue fuzzy thing way in the back it may or may not what <laughs> may be what killed the dinosaurs. So unless you're interested in drinking ketchup straight from the cup bottle, it's the cupboards for you. Uh, no Pepsi? This is not canon. Rummaging through the p cupboards, it's most of the stuff that's gonna take take cooking to eat. There's simply no time to cook up noodles. Damn it! The only things you, you come up with they be consumed without prep time are a single candy cane and a can of Sue Strumming. Okay. For reasons only the narrator can explain. Whoever that might be. Garbage Field can only grab one of these snacks. So which one should it be? Hmm. You tell me. Yeah. The Sue Strumming? Are you sure? Alright. <laughs> you got the can of Sue Strumming. You tuck it away for safekeeping. <laughs> Did you try to spell it? <laughs> Rådig skit. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Hmm. I smell Google Translate. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you did. Hmm. Turn on. Hmm. Well. Fake sweet. He tried. He tried. All right. You're in Joel's studio apartment, thinking of what your next move should be. At this point, you could just take take off, or you could waste the time poking around in the house a bit. All right. Let's listen to some tunes. Hey, what better way to get yourself pumped up for going out and saving Christmas than to listen to some tunes? Joel's got a pretty nice setup here and a decent selection of records to spin. Sliding the bottom door of the cabinet open, you pull out a small selection of records. Keep in mind that you got a holiday to save, so you really ought to listen to just one song. After all, the longer you take to get out of here, the more time that letter's got to get to Santa Claus. So keep in mind, what album are you going to play? Hmm... Hmm. What should I do? Anime OST. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? I, I got, got, I got, I got to do freeform jazz. Ah, that's the stuff. <laughs> you can listen to freeform jazz all day. No idea why Joel keeps trying to throw this record away. No way we're gonna no play whenever you play it. These hip cats are in the groove, baby. This song is so great you just can't keep it out of your head. It's like using steel wool on the brain. It just cleans the old skull right out. Don't think any of the song is going to take get in there for a while. Anyway, <laughs> you can stop listening whenever you're ready. It's just gonna loop forever. Other ways, this is a game after all. Bruh. It broke. It. it crashed. Was that a bad end? Is that a bad end? Bad ending. Try that again. Let's let's uh, let's uh. Dude, there's so many different paths here. It's it's pretty crazy. Um. 
I, I wonder, I wonder if there's like a like a Scythe Lord plug in here. I gotta check it. Heavy metal isn't really your thing on most days. You're more of a jazz kind of guy. But something about this Judas Priest character that Joel's got an album on from seems to res resonate with you. Listen to that song, you find yourself feeling tougher than ever. You're way more confident. You're a real bad cat now. And I'm not talking about those <laughs> that asshole wags on an alley's and cries like a bitch when he falls off a ball in the park. <laughs> Nobody's gonna mess with the garbage field. Not if you have anything to say about it. Anyhow, you can stop listening whenever you're ready. It's just gonna loop forever. Otherwise, this is a game after all. Let's grab another snack here. The candy cane. You got the candy cane. You took it away for safekeeping. All right. Chase the old computer. All right. What else can I do? I can check my website. <laughs> Bruh. Ha! Huh, that's weird. Still no visitor garbage field's super cool homepage. You did everything right, though. It's got that Duke Nukem explosion gif. <laughs> I thought it was like a chicken nugget. And a dancing baby. And even a picture of you. Oh, I see. It's still under construction. Typical. When is that lousy stick figure going to stop digging that hole and finish making your website for you? Okay, can I... Peek at Joel's email? Hang on, what, what, hang on, hang on. Can I just reject this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. And then... Oh, no, 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 I fucked up! Oh, whatever. Uh, do you like how I said I fucked up by responding? N how nice, huh? How nice! <laughs> there, Ian, I fucked up. Okay, leave apartment. There's no time to lose. Garbage field. <laughs> Let's blow this pop stand and hit the streets before it's too late. After a brief trip down and out of the apartment building, you step out into the bitter cold of Swedish winter. The ice of pain and practically burning your paws. It sounds like this, you wish you were close, but hey, you know you're thinking about that right now. Joel likely left the letter hours ago, so you're going to have to act fast if you're going to have any chance of stopping it. You're going to need a plan, and it's going to have a have to be a good one. But you know, your garbage field, good planning would have prevented your existence. It's not in your nature. Instead, you're going to just come up with a vague idea of how to save Christmas, and kind of just go with the broad strokes. So. With the gears of your mind grinding and smoking, you do your best to choose a course of action. In the end, you decide to... Use magic, use science, stop it all at the post office, stop it at the North Pole, or not save Christmas at all. Well... <laughs> the magic? Magic. Fine, we'll use magic too. Thinking a little outside the box, you decide that conventional methods of solving this problem aren't going to work. No, I said it's time to turn <laughs> turn to the dark arts and do some good old magic to save Christmas. The trouble is, where are you going to find magic? It's not like it's something you just kind of do. You gotta seek out some kind of source of power. Oh, 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 okay. The haunted castle, the haunted house, the haunted woods, the bad part of town, Inside your heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Pfft, oh man, that's adorable. You crack me up, garbage field. No, but seriously, where do you want to look? Oh god damn it. I guess I didn't work here. In the woods? Sure, the bad part of town. Oh god. Okay, guys, Haunted Woods. I kind of want to do Haunted Castle, actually. Let me see, Dracula. The bad part, fine, we'll go to the bad part of town now. Ah, what better place to search for magic than the bad side of town? After all, in the days of old, magic artifacts were always hidden away in some terrible place, guarded by all manners of perils and creatures of the night. What's the wrong, what's the wrong side of the tracks, if not the modern equivalent to that? Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. You arrive in the bad part of town and take a deep breath. Ah, smells like that urban decay. Smells like... Urban decay. I guess. Looking around, you see a lot of boarded up storefronts and wandering hobos with broken dreams. 
but there are a couple of points of interest here. There's a seedy looking bar called Det Karna Helet. Are you, are you, oh, oh, I, you forgot an umlaut in the text. Okay, the Galna Hallet, which you're sure is a lovely establishment. You should choose to not to judge a book by its cover. Not from from there is a real dark alleyway, and standing under a streetlight is a shifty looking dude in a long coat. Oh no, ham. It means the cra crazy hole, by the way, so you know. Shifty dude. Oh god. Oh, fine. Following that fantastical logic that brought you here in the first place, I guess you could say that the shifty looking guy's long coat is sort of just a modern day equivalent to the robes of a kindly, helpful wizard. So confident this man can help you, you approach and ask him if he knows where you can might you might get some magic. I don't know, you a cop? Of course not, you reply. I'm a cartoon cat. What kind of silly question is that? Well then, yeah. I can help you, uh, my friend. I know we get all kinds of magic. And it would absolutely rock your world. Ah, yes, that sounds like some powerful magic, all right. Not wanting to waste time, you are to your new friend, <laughs> new friend onwards. He leads you through the urban decay through a labyrinth of worse and worse looking buildings. Finally, Finally, he leads you to the board up building that pretty much looks like a bomb hit it pretty hard. Okay, uh, prying pr a gap in the board covering the doorway with a crowbar from beneath his coat. He waves his free hand towards the opening. This means dick. This means to fuck. Okay. Slip in there. The dude. Okay. The dude you're looking for. Okay, should be in the old, old man's room. He's got a long gray hair. Goes by Mr. Wizard. You can't miss him! Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Slinking into the old building, you quickly discover that it reeks of mold and hobo shit. Ah, uh, Merry Christmas everybody. I don't know what they eat to make it smell that bad, but man, it's worse than any other kind of shit. Thankfully, none of them seem to be around at the moment. Or if they are, they're very well camouflaged. After making your way through several hallways on the verge of total collapse, you spot an old, partially worn away men's room sign. This is it, the lair of Mr. Wizard. You enter his domain eager to seek his aid. Okay, wasn't quite what I expected, but alright. Good. <clears throat> Entering the old, old bathroom, you're hit with a wave of moist hot air. It looks like most of the old fixtures have been smashed to bits with a hammer. And some sort of scientific equipment has been moved in. Scientific or magical? Yo! Asks a voice from the crippled stall. Are you the guy looking for some magic? How did you know, you ask? Eyes wide as saucers. <clears throat> How the fuck do you think, cat? My man's in the street called me on my cell and said you were coming. Oh, come on, we gotta make this quick. I was right in the middle of cooking up some crystals, and that shit can explode if you do it wrong! Wow, he can cook crystals? Truly, this man is the wizard you seek! So, what are we talking here? You want some angel dust? Some magic mushrooms? Crocodile? Well, angel dust might do the trick for the situation I'm in, but I think I'll take some magic mushrooms. How do I use the magic, though? Do I have to put them into a potion or speak a word of power or maybe... You just eat them, goddamn! I swear to fucking god, man! Where does Anders find you, assholes? Now give me my goddamn money and take your damn mushrooms and then get the hell out! Grateful for the help, you <laughs> Grateful for the f help, but fearful you may incur a wizard's wrath. Uh, you hand him a wad of cash and take a plastic baggie or some Frankly, they're rather underwhelming mushrooms. You expected something big and colorful, not these grooty shriveled things that smell like ass. Oh well, magic is magic. You quickly rush out of the ruined building and I'm once safely outside. You waste no time in beginning the magic ritual. Oh well. I like how this has branched off so bad. It's me with a letter, garbage field coming after me, and now he's buying drugs because of it. It's not really much of a ritual, it's... Is it? Pretty weird that all I have to do is just eat them. 
but whatever. You pop the mushrooms in your mouth, chew them up, and swallow them. <laughs> okay. Uh, in short order, the magic effect of the mushroom stick effect. Unfortunately for you, this doesn't appear to be a magic that you can freely control. God, it figures, doesn't it? Magic without incantations or spell circles or powerful artifacts has just got to have a catch, huh? <laughs> reality no longer makes sense. Reality is an illusion. You have left reality and entered the second reality, released by future crew at the Assembly 93 Demo Party. The demo scene is very seen. Is demo scene is every scene, and now you're in, now you're the star baby. The purple electric experience is now sideways in Quantum Dairy Downs. Can Tuesday remember to lock the baseball? Flavor taste for sensation in all minds. A dog forever wanting, a love never gained on a shovel from Mars. Tented peaks in the awning of eternity. It is coming. It is happening. Your brain is white hot with the power of the universe, Garbage Field. What will you do with this newfound glory? What is your answer? <laughs> oh god. Imbibe shoehorn. Sunshine forever. Holy roller. Brain error. Or 777. <laughs> Seven. Jack. Jackpot. Jackpot, baby! In reality, you probably just puked everywhere or something. Whatever the case, you'll probably never know. You'll be on this trip for a long time. And by the time you come back, it'll probably be too late to save Christmas. I'm on a permo. permanent trip. The game is over. You made poor choices in the game. This is the ultimate. This ultimately led to your downfall. Next time, maybe just say Yowie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Good. Good callback. Good callback. All right, try that again. Oh, this is this is great. I like that somebody got the Lemmy reference at least. All right, let's try that again. Let's uh, grab a snack. Go to the castle next time? We get the Sue streaming this time, I think. I mean, I don't know if it has any matters or whatever, but. Uh, let's listen to some tunes. Let's listen to. Uh, anime OST. Anime OST? Remember to save state. Oh, I will, I will, I will. But I don't have that many save state. Because I have this. Like, I'm using. Um, motherfucking. Uh, well, I can do this. I can save state like this on uh, RetroArc, but. Uh, Alright, but anyway. Um, Anime OST classical? Um uh, Okay, yeah. We did jazz already, you missed it. Anime, fuck it. This one was tucked between a couple of manime soundtracks. Almost as if Joel was trying to hide it or something. You never really gave much of a thought to anime. What's the big deal? Oh my god. Listen to this song, something stirs inside of you, like Cthulhu stirring from his slumber at the bottom of the sea or something. Something has awakened within you. You're not sure what this new feeling is, but it's burning in your soul like a mighty flame. Anyway, you can stop listening to whenever you're ready. It's just gonna start a loop forever. Okay, thanks. This time I'm gonna reject the email, alright? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I feel kind of bad, a little bit, doing this. Yes. Really rudely dejected. Oh my god. You write the following response. Dear idiot. That's more of a, more my style of email. This is the single most stupid idea I've ever heard in my entire life. And I once heard someone say that we should bring Hitler back to life as a Frankenstein and make him a king of Earth. You must be the dumbest possible person in the whole entire world, and probably the universe too. Why would I want to play some dumb game online with those idiot dumbest in my chat? I only say that to get their hopes up. They are the dumbest idiots who were ever dumb idiots, except you, you're dumber. I hope you stub your toe real bad. I hope you step on a Lego. I hope something really unpleasant happens to you. Insincerely, Joel. You're seriously so dumb, idiot. 
Jarvis in. There. Now he has an answer. And knows that Joel isn't going to play the game. With or without him. Maybe you laid it on a bit too thick. But hey, maybe. That'll keep him from bugging Joel about these these things anymore. And then he won't get any more on these unanswered emails. See, it all works out in the end. Oh, I feel really bad now. Alright. Let's see here. We are gonna stop at the North Pole. Stop at the post office. Use science. Use magic. Science. Science. It's probably your... It, the problem you're faced with is formidable enough that you don't think you can solve it by conventional means. No. This is a problem for science. Fortunately for you, not far from town is a super special secret Swedish science station, or s station for short. Within these hallowed halls dwell some of the brightest minds in the nation. Surely someone there will be able to help you. After a quick jaunt, <laughs> you arrive at the station and step inside. You think that something with special and secret in the name would have security up front, barring Rannis from just wandering it off the street, but surprisingly you're able to just waltz right in, in the main laboratory. Gosh, how convenient! <laughs> I like that, I like that. Uh, we're scientists, so, you know, E equals MC squared, you know, it's kind of like Half-Life. Anyway, so now that you're here, how shall we go on, <laughs> go on about trying to utilize the power of science to save the magic of the Christmas season? As to use the time machine. The time machine? Get powers from radiation. Press the biggest red button. Discuss philosophy. Hmm. Well. Well, now. This might have to be uh, part two of this. This is a game is very long, actually. The big red button! Are you really sure that's what you want to do? After all, when has hitting the biggest, reddest button ever been the right thing to do in a laboratory setting? Isn't this kind of asking for it? You're going to do it anyways, aren't you? Of course, nothing can stop you from hitting that jolly candy-like button. And see, nothing bad hap- Oh. The laboratory and everyone within a five mile radius have been destroyed in a massive nuclear meltdown. The game is over. And coincidentally, the stream actually went down as I did that too. So we got a little bit of a Maniac man Mansion reference, huh? It's always a good thing. Well. <laughs> Garbage field, you tuna head. Only you could turn the quest to save Christmas into a horrific, horrifying mushroom cloud of nuclear death. Remember, sometimes a, cl a, a cliche exists for a reason. So maybe next time you encounter a giant red button in a laboratory setting, don't mash it, okay? Okay. <laughs> what if I skip the intro like this? Okay. All right, let's uh, let's try that again. Can I just leave the apartment immediately? There's no time to lose. Okay, let's, 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 uh... I want to see what happens if you, 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 you use power radiation. Uh, use science. Oh shit, oh, I select like something different. I'm sorry. It's brilliant in its simplicity. All you have to do is use their time machine. I used the time machine this time. Use the time machine to go back in time and undo the mistakes that have led to this outcome. It's by far the best plan you've ever come up with. Even more so than the time you bought into that dyed pill pyramid scheme. And I mean, hey, you are you are in on the ground floor! You approach the nearest scientist and it nonchalantly asks, Hey man, you mind if I borrow your time machine? What's that? The man grumbles, not even turning from his work. Oh yes, of course, of course, go right ahead. That looks amazing. Well, of course, that was easy. With the question of permission out of the way, you wander over to the clearly marked time machine across the room, looking down at the controls console. You quickly get an idea how things work. You should be able to take this baby for a spin in no problem. So where are we going? Or should I say, when? Oh my god! 
Oh my god. You go to small town USA, northern Sweden, New Jersey, or yesterday. Uh, these are fun, but... I really should do quick save so I can quick, like, go back and forth and do this. Uh, let's just do the most concrete one, alright? Concrete ones. Of course, it's so obvious that you can't just believe you didn't just think to do this yes immediately. Go back in time to yesterday and tear up the letter after Joel goes back to bed. You just go back. Joel goes to bed. Sorry, I can't read. Bada bing, bada boom. You're in, you're out. Christmas is saved. <laughs> Stealing. Stealing your nerves against the rigors of time travel. Mentally preparing yourself to slip backwards through the fourth dimension. You climb into the time machine and set the controls for yesterday. Quantum flux particle device activated. Brownie and motion inducer engaged. Dashing hula girl wiggling and jiggling. You crank the time drive lever back to the past and dramatically smack the button labeled GO! And the machine roars to life. All at once, reality melts away and you enter the time stream. Day and night both occur at once. People are swarmed to massive centipede-like creatures, born at one end and bird at the other. All manner of the Hackenide. Played outside gags whisk past you as you as you hurtle backwards towards yesterday. Unfortunately, you don't have much time to enjoy these sights. All at once, you hear a loud bang followed by the very nasty sound of grinding from the inside of the machine. The gauge immediately go haywire, spinning out of the control like a cup ride at the world's deadliest amusement park. The time machine shudders and shakes beneath you, violently shaking you about. Finally, if something... If simply given up the ghost... As if simply given up the ghost, it makes a comical wheezing puff sound and drops like a stone. You spiral out control through the time and space, shrieking like a gutted cheerleader in a straight-to-VHS slasher film. The last thing you see before blacking out from the, uh... What would you call them? G-forces? But... For time travel? T-forces, I guess? The last thing you see before blacking out <laughs> from the T-forces of your r mad descent is the rapidly approaching face of an enormous clock. Later. You awaken in pitch darkness, unsure where, <laughs> where or when you are. The machine's windows are completely covered by something that blocks out even the slightest amount of light. That is, of course, assuming that you're not in some hard, lightless void that exists beyond the beginning of a material universe. Trying to put out that frankly hor horrifying existential crisis type thought out of your mind, you decide that the only way to get out of your bearings straight with the machine damage is, if it, is to try and get the door open and have a look at your surroundings. Mustering up your strength, you pull out the door handle and lean it. Lean into it with it all your might, hoping it'll be bad, be enough to wrench you loose from whatever hellless confines you've been wedged inside of. Oh. Oh oh. Oh no. Oh ne ne ne. Unfortunately for you, though rather comically for anyone who might have seen. Who might have seen? Uh, it turns out that the time machine was blacked out from the sun simply by being inside of a patch of dense underbrush. Your brute force approach was highly unnecessary, causing you to tumble out of the bushes like some kind of vaguely cat like ragdoll. Amazingly, it seems that despite cat cat catastrophic haha, failure, the time machine at least managed to dump you out of the same planet, albeit obviously far longer ago than yesterday. You obviously w wound up in the most generic time travel location of all. Prehistory. What's more, you even seem to have landed in a civilized area, or else civilized as the time before indoor plumbing can be. As you get up from the ground and dust yourself off, one of the local Neanderthal men approaches you, no doubt confused and amazed by your strange looks and sudden appearance. You prepare yourself to endure much grunting and poking. No, no, no. No 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 no. No 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 no. No 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 no. Hi, Apparel! Says the shockingly well spoken caveman. Quite a trip you just had there, huh? You're right? Oh, yeah, thanks. I'll mention it. 
continues. Oh, but where are my manners? Flintstone's the name. Fred Flintstone. He sticks out his hand in your general direction. Out of here, pal! I'm Garbagefield, you reply, awkwardly shaking his massive hand. So, uh, what brings you to Bedrock, Garbagefield? Some convenient, convenient convention in town? Maybe some, some lodge meeting? Because I'm a member of the loyal order of the Water Buffalo, and I'm always interested in meeting a fellow from another outfit. This is getting so weird and confusing that you kind of start to doubt that any of this is happening. And in that mindset, you sort of just blurt out information that probably shouldn't be sh shared with well, <laughs> was one in the past. Actually, I'm a cartoon from millions of years in the future. My time machine broke down in that bush over there, and now I'm kind of stranded here because I don't know the first thing about fixing it. A time machine, huh? Boy, that's too bad. When that Jetson fella got stuck here with his family, at least his kid knew how to fix the thing. What? What is he talking about? How does he understand what you mean? How does he understand English? What in the hell is going on? I tell you what, Garbagefield. As long as you're stuck here, how about I pull some strings down at the quarry and get you a job there? Hell, I'm sure Wilma wouldn't mind putting him get back into you can. <laughs> get back into your own two feet. So long as you can make yourself useful around the house. What do you say, Peril? Sure. Can I do my smoke? Where's that bootleg guy? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. I ain't gonna fucking do it. No, 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 no. Tell you what, tell you what. This is, the, this is where we should start saving. So, let's save here. Okay. I wanna see what happens when you bum a smoke. I don't know, maybe. Frankly, all this trace of what happened has me on edge. Can I bum a smoke <laughs> off you while I think about it? A smoke? Why, sure! I just got the thing for you. <laughs> Try one of these. Wins this the one filter cigarette delivers a flavor. Hang on. Let me let me do it the do it the right way. Okay, hang on. Alright. Oh yeah, I've heard of Winston cigarettes. People who really like smoking know that it's what up front that counts. And that's where Winston steps out ahead of the crowd with their exclusive filter blend. Choice, golden tobacco specially selected and specially persist for filter smoking. Yes, sir. Filter blend makes the big taste difference. And only Winston has it. Take it from me, this filter cigarette really tastes like a cigarette. To me, taste is a must. That's why I smoke Winston. After all, it's a brand my doctor prescribed me. That's what makes Winston America's best selling fil- America. Oh yeah, they said that in the commercial too. Oh. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, my first and only uh, cigarette sponsor stream. Make your next pack Winston. You betcha, Garbage Field. After all, Winston tastes good like a ch -ch -ch cigarette should. Oh my god. Now, wow, well, I'll have to talk about flavor and taste and sales. Figure really has me thinking. I've never smoked a day in my life. And now I find myself wondering if I've wasted the last 30 years by not starting. After all, nobody does it better. So. What if science says it's just about the worst thing you can intentionally do to your body? What? Are, are you afraid of us, little rich, smooth flavor? No, this game is in no way sponsored by Winston Cigarette. <laughs> Good ending. So, wait, wait a minute. So, I, I like how these endings turn out. So, this was a game about Garbage Field going to this, the, the lab to go back a day before I sent off the letter, um, he went back in time machine, went back to Flintstones, and he just smoked a cigarette with, with Fred? Okay. 
Where can I find that bootleg guy? <sighs> hey, wait, you blurred out. A shit-eating grin rapidly crossing your face. Now I recognize you. You're the guy from that meme that Joel started. Where's the other guy? That bootleg guy in the overalls. Mm-hmm. All right. Alright. Alright. Okay. I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, pal. Someone like that around here. Oh, sure there is. What's his name again? Grandpa? Grampy Dampy? I've never heard of such a character. He, uh, reiterates. I started back and forth. Boy, it's, it's getting late all of a sudden. You should go. Oh, come on. You know the guy. He's got the blue mustache and the bloody gums. And you were there all floating in the star. No idea, sorry. Uh... <laughs> Comes his reply, sweat visibly dripping down his forehead. He quickly leans into your face, pulls your head into close, and whispers to you ever so quietly. Walk away. Stop talking like it. But walk away. If he hears you, we're dead. You understand me? Both of us are gonna be in for a world of trouble if he hears you. So. Walk away! That's... That's real ominous. Real ominous. And frankly, pretty creepy. You're not entirely sure what he's on about. But if it bugs, <laughs> if it bugs him that much, you decide it's probably for the best if you just mosey on him. However, just a few feet from where you started, you remember the name. That's right, it was... Granddad! Granddad? Flint? Shit. You just couldn't... <laughs> you just couldn't leave well enough, could you? Fred <laughs> gave you plenty of chances to just walk away. He told you that you were pl playing with forces you didn't understand. And you just... And yet you just... When it seemed you might have gotten the message. You went ahead and you did the thing anyway. But hey, anything for a laugh, huh? The game is over. Well, you may be funnier than Granddad. He's apparently much stronger than you. <laughs> what did you expect, man? He's been around a lot longer. Maybe try again. Drag well, most people are making an honorized merch with your face on it, chump. Well. Alright. Stream over. Pack it up, boys. Alright. See, I do it for Christmas. I, I, I do a little Granddad for, like, Christmas. But not not other time. Not other time, alright? Thank you, Bass Joel. <laughs> a Christmas gift. You take a moment to <laughs> mill out the situation in your head, in your mind. Okay, the time machine is toast, and frankly, the level of quantum me mechanical knowledge it would take to repair it won't exist for millions of years. Even with your modern knowledge, you might never figure out the problem, even if you spend the rest of your life trying. This guy, practically a stranger, offered to put a roof over your head and get you a job until you can get yourself back on your feet. It's an incredibly kind gesture, and one you might not run into again for quite a while. So hell, if you're stuck here, you might as well take the best out of things. Sure, what the heck, kid? You say shaking Fred's hand once more? I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> True to his word. Fred was able to get you a job at Slate Rock and Gravel. It wasn't much, but enough to get you started at least. Of course, people were having a bit of a hard time with your name, so you started going by Granite Field. <laughs> Over time, you, Fred, and his other pal, Barney Rubble, came to be the best of friends, always getting into all matters of prehistoric hijinks. Whatever is something as simple as lying to the as lying to the wives in order to sneak out for a night of bowling. Or as hard as to believe as having it to step in and replace an international spy who happened to be Fred's exact double. Rest assured, it was always a gay old time. Yabba dabba do, I got some pasta. Okay. <clears throat> well, on the one hand, you definitely didn't save Joel's Christmas. On the other hand, you're now a page right out of history. Always. Also, who knows what effect your presence in prehistoric Earth has had on the future. Maybe Christmas isn't even a thing. Maybe Joel was never born. Maybe dinosaurs killed all the humans and took over. It doesn't matter now, because you're yabba dabba doom to remain in the past forever. 
The game is over. Did you find all the secret areas? If not, you missed that on a you missed out on a lot of the upgrades to your health and armor. What? W what? Next time, <laughs> next time around, you're gonna have one hell of a hard time with the bosses. There are bosses in this game, right? Uh huh. I need, I need, I need a, I need a, I need a moment to like regain my composure here, cause that shit fucked me up. That fucked me up. All right, that fucked me up. <sighs> I need a Winston. Tastes good like a... Wait. Yeah, Barney, Winston tastes good like a... Cigarette. Alright. <laughs> Be right back. Alright, we are back. Oh boy. So I wasn't quite ready for all that shit, but uh, that's how it is. That's how it is. I would do this already. I wonder, do you think maybe you need to do the start stuff to get a better ending? Nah. I I, I doubt that. I did a, a, include a, a, a walkthrough just in case we would fuck up, so, you know, hey. Oh, we haven't done a classical yet. Uh, oh, shit, I'm sorry. I didn't show it on screen. Uh, that was... A mistake on my part. Well, uh, we're back. I, I selected classical on the music this time, so uh, there we go. <sighs> ah, yes, you're feeling a bit intellectual this evening, so you put some classical music. You decide on sona so sonatina number no. one in B major by renowned composer Christopher Stevens. Listen to the late motifs and the port portamento and the treble clefs. Okay, maybe you're not man, you're not an intellectual, but you feel more intellectual, and that's what really counts, right? You're simply overflowing with pomp pomposity. Is that the word? <laughs> you're superior to everyone around you. Anyhow, <laughs> you can stop listening whenever you're ready. All right. I'm very smart. Okay. Let's let's go. Let, let's go back to the lab. Let's go back to the lab, everybody. Let's go, um, and get radiated. Okay, here we go. Let's see, let's see here, just in case. Save? Alright. Um, get powers from radiation. No! Stop! You walk over to one of the scientists and talk in his lab coat. Yes? He says, turning to face you momentarily <laughs> Confused to see nobody before glancing down. Is there something I can help you with, Kitty Cat? Yeah, uh, you ask awkwardly, swiveling on a, <laughs> on one foot in embarrassment. Could you show me what puts out most of the radiation in this lab? Whatever for. I want to get superpowers so I can fly to the North Pole and use my powers to stop Santa from reading a mean letter that my friend wrote him as a joke. Well, really drunk and sent by mistake the next morning. Hmm, says the sign, rubbing his chin. That does sound reasonable. Let me <laughs> let me show you to the nuclear reactor core. There, <laughs> there, that should give you enough exposure. <sighs> oh God! The scientist leads you to the airlock <laughs> and opens the entrance door. <laughs> I'll get you through, explains. Once you're inside, however, I'll have to get back to my research. I'm sure you'll be able to get yourself out with your super strength once that manifests. You kind of just flash him the okay sign with your fingers and step through the airlock. There's a lot of hissing and mechanical grinding and alarm sirens going off. And a computer detects you're not wearing the proper equipment for entering the core. But hey, that's what the whole point of this is, right? After a few moments, the inner door slides open and you enter the warm green sterile glow of the reactor core. Alright, here's where the magic happens. All you have to do is stand there and let the radiation bombard your very makeup until the science does its thing. I'm not exactly sure how you'll be able to tell once your superpowers are manifested, but you're sure you're sure you'll know once and once it happens. After a while, after a little while, you think you're really starting to feel those superpowers forming. It's weird though. You think that gaining superpowers would feel a lot less like having a, the flu. The intense nausea you, you just means that the radiation is working. Okay. Some time later, you, your powers finally take shape. 
With great excitement, you watch as you use your newfound gift to make clumps out of your own hair fall out of will, revealing the skin to be... <laughs> The skin beneath to be painfully burnt. This doesn't seem particularly useful as a tool for saving Christmas, but you never know. Maybe like you can make Santa feel real. Oh, something skipped. Okay, whatever. I don't know what happened there, but whatever. However, after waiting longer still, you find that the super strength you were hoping for is actually super weakness. Oh. You try and get the airlock open, only to find out you are powerless to do so. This is so strange. There's literally no reason you should be starting to feel so faint right now. Faint! You're super guardian feel, right? Oh, uh, no, it actually turns out you're super dead. For whatever reason, the life-giving energy of nuclear power has decided instead to make you incredibly ill. Turns out that the whole hair falling out from power is actually a symptom of radiation poisoning. Needless to say, nobody found out you lo Nobody found you locked in the re reactor until it was far too late to save you. Wow, you lose! The game is over. The moral of today's story is gold is where do you find it, and motion pictures are the best entertainment. Neat. Well, I sure got a Christmas gift. Let's try that again. Let's uh discuss philosophy. Ah yes, of course. You're surrounded by some of the most brilliant minds in the world. So why not to probe their minds for some sort of philosophical answer? After all, that would mean you don't have to put in nearly as much effort, because the power of the mind or whatever, I don't know. You approach one of these scientists in clear throat, and she looks down at you curiously. Is there something I can help you with, Kitty? Yeah, you say, awkwardly, you have a moment to maybe, I don't know, discuss the philosophical elements of a problem I've got to. Well, I'm, uh, I'm pretty close to a breakthrough on this cancer research. She says, rubbing her chin. But heck, I can take a quick, I can, I can take a quick break to talk philosophy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little more important things to talk about. All right. <sighs> Hang on, I'm just starting to fix my microphone here. Hang on, give me a second. Almost ready. Okay. The two of you wander off to the break room and sit down. She offers you a coffee, but you decline. That stuff makes you jittery. So, what seems to be the trouble? How can science help him? Well... My friend Joel got really drunk and sent a really nasty letter to Santa. He wrote us a joke, but he was so drunk he forgot that and went ahead and sent to him this morning. Sorry, my microphone is really fucking... Is my headphone jack? Has to be in a very specific spot. Or else it has that, like, I can only hear left or right in my headphones, and it's super frustrating. Well, let's see. That kind of, uh, kind of is a hard one to tackle with just, uh, philosophy. She thinks for a moment, I guess you could do look at it from the perspective of the multiple worlds theory. Have you ever heard of it? Of course. Being that you're so refined and knowledgeable... Oh, I see! The if you get certain items, you get even smarter! From the classical music! Maybe. Uh, maybe. <sighs> You've certainly heard of the multiple worlds theory. It's a theory that puts you forward that there are possibly infinite parallels, universes at the confines of your own. Child's play, really. This gets you thinking about the makeup of your own reality. You've never really noticed it before, but something feels sort of off about it. The more you think about it, the more incongruities becomes apparent to you. It's obvious what's happened. Something has damaged reality itself. I hate to change the subject, you say, but I've just come up with a troubling theory. Is it possible that the fabric of our own worlds has been damaged in some way? And if so, might we come up with a way we can repair it? That's, that's an interesting hypothesis. Actually, we'd, we'd have to run down to the space-time division and do some comparisons on our records. But if you're right, it should be easy to spot the fluctuation and pinpoints where something went wrong. Hmm. Sure enough, when the two of you get... Yeah, how funny would it be if this is how long it took me to play the game, right? Like, this game is new. It just got released yesterday, I'm just saying. But, like, imagine. I'm like, wow! Why? We! This might this might be the date I stream week of garbage people, whatever. Sure enough, when the two of you <laughs> get to looking at the records, there was some parents... It was apparent some sort of major event going back as far as mid-October in 2017. Whatever it was, it's clearly done significantly damaged to reality. Is there anything we can do? 
Well, the scientists replies, it's possible that by folding space-time to bring the exact point to the damage close enough to our labs, we might be able to get we might be able to then weld the damage point shut by creating a large enough burst of heat. Some Star Trek shit. Hmm, it sounds crazy, but it might just work. Let's get started. Hmm. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> After hours of preparation, the experiment is finally ready. If all goes according to plan, the location of the damage will momentarily fall into the machine, which will then proceed produce a momentary fission reaction so powerful that it should, in theory, repair the damage. Of course, there's also this chance that, it, that it's going to fail horribly and destroy the entirety of reality, reducing this universe to subatomic particles spread throughout whatever ex extra cosmic space exists between worlds. But, I mean, hey, what's the science without risks? Everything goes dark. Wow, what a weird dream! Oh, it skipped. Fuck it. <sighs> For now, I've got a lot of extra Z's to catch up on. Was it all a dream? Did Joel draw Rev at the end of Bob Rossick to For the Next Generation? Or did he draw Garfield? And that's what it was! That's when I first drew Garbage Field! Oh! Oh! That's what it was! Or did he draw Gar Garfield and the re resulting mistake simply went on to undo his own existence? We'll never know for sure because I'm not telling you. You get an ending. It's not the real one though, so keep trying to support too. Shit. It was all a dream. Super Nintendo Sega Genesis. Sorry. I see. I did unfortunately skip a little bit of dialogue here because the... Uh, the A button is really sensitive, so when you press it, it's like... Bleep. Okay, well, let's just... Let's just well, oh, so, some of these have secret bonus endings, I think. When was the last saved? Hang on, let's make sure, hang on. Save state 2, save, and if I go back here and then I load, then it's... I, and I, I could do it again, but nah, 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 that's a little too, uh, too much. Okay, well, um, so, try talking philosophy with, without jazz music. L you know what? L let's try to do that right now, just in case, just in case. So, use science. Speedrun. Okay, here we go. Let's see if anything change, change, changes. Uh, Joel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Have ever heard of it? No, so it does change. If you go through at the start, it changes things radically. It matters. That's fucking incredible. That's the thing that the internet weirdos to justify why they think anime is real and how somehow they, they'll get their gender bent. Go what? Goku, right? Uh, I suppose, though, that sounds like a rather incorrect interpretation. Anyhow, you might look at it from the perspective that perhaps in a parallel world to our own, Christmas hasn't been ruined. It doesn't really help, but it means it might make you feel better, right? Hey, now that's an idea. Rather than expend any real effort in trying to save Christmas, why not just focus on a uh, potentially al alternative reality? Christmas was never ruined at all, or hell, why not pose to Joel an alternate reality in which Christmas never existed, and Hitler World War II, oh Jesus, and Adam Sandler stars in every movie, now that would be a worse situation. Oh no! You, th you thank the scientists for your help, for your help, and uh, shake your hand at home, satisfied that throughout th doing the next to nothing, you've accomplished more than you could ever do by putting in effort, or you know, at least you come up with a solution that didn't involve doing things. So, it's totally different! It's totally different! What the shit? Joel asks in frustration. Where's all my gifts? Well, Joel, you say, putting on a pair of glasses you found on the sidewalk, trying to look smart. Your drunken actions the other night led us into a reality where Christmas has been ruined. What? But have you ever considered that in accordance with the multiple worlds theory, there may be a parallel universe out there in which the things are worse? Maybe a world where Christmas doesn't exist at all, or one where... 
You know this was going to happen. He decided to help by coming up with some bullshit about how it could be worse. Because science! I mean, uh, the important thing is, part is that I had good intentions, right? The road to hell is paved with good intentions, Garbage Field. But which, I mean, I'm gonna send you straight to hell, are you shit cat? Oh. And Joel was was as good as his word. He did indeed send you straight to hell. Frankly, it's less cold than Sweden and has more daylight, though. So in the end, was this really all that bad? If it's pure Michigan, welcome to pure hell. I don't know, leave me alone. That was one of the most stupid plants I've ever heard, Garbage Field. Of course, there was a, probably a parallel universe in which it was considered a masterstroke, if that makes you feel any better about it. The game is over. You had 18, but the dealer got 21. Blackjack is a cruel mistress. Well. Okay, well, uh, so the start here really matters. I mean, Zero put so much effort into this. It's, it's really, this game is really good. Like, it's not just like, hey, it's something that's cobbled together. He put so much time and effort into this, and it's, it's awesome. It's fantastic. I love this. But I wonder, what can we do with the time machine that would be different? Uh, well, in the meantime... In the meantime, let's try something else. Let's try out, um... Not say Christmas after all. Let's not do anything. You stop and think... You stop and think about it for a quick minute. Why should you save Christmas? It, it's cold and a well... Well, they just ask about it here. And I mean, really, this whole mess is Joel's fault. He dug his own grave, and this time he should ha have to lay... I cannot read. Who cares if he tries to blame it on you? You it's, you know it's not your fault. That settles it. Not this time, Joel. No way. You don't care if he's got to pay his taxes or whatever the fuck this time. You're not going on some janky-ass terrible quest just to bail him out. With your arms firmly crossed, you march back up to the apartment and watch some TV. <sighs> what the fucking shit, says Joel, glaring at the empty spot below the tree where his gift should be. Why didn't I get any presents? You sent a really awful letter to Santa <laughs> you wrote when you were drunk. Remember? You gave him that smug, shit-eating grin he knows so well. So basically, you ruined Christmas. Joel glares at you, seething him with silent rage. Avena's forehead is visibly bulging. Just as you think steam is coming, is about to come out of his ears, he mutters with an eerie calmness. You knew this was going to happen. Uh, yeah, you stammer as concern begins to replace your smug arrogance. You knew this was going to happen, he repeats, still eerily calm. Before exploding in a rage, grabbing you by the neck and screaming, AND YOU DIDN'T DO ANYTHING ABOUT IT?! You try and muster the courage to tell him it's not your job to do that. But before you can de get it get it out, he yells at you again. That's it, you shit cat! You're getting neutered! <laughs> Tomorrow! Well, it looks like you really screwed up this time, Garbage Field. Not only did you let Christmas be ruined, but next time but next year you'll have you'll have to deck the halls without your ball. <laughs> But hey, look on the bright side, uh, Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That is fucking amazing. Uh... <laughs> uh, there, there's Zero, there's Zero in, in, in the chat. Hey. So, I, I've been blown away by this game so far. I, I didn't expect the the game to have multiple endings depending on the start s stuff, but it's been uh, it's been a treat so far. Okay. So it really does make a difference, you know. But I'm not gonna get any. I'm not gonna get any. I, I might look at the the sheet cheat sheet at the bottom of the the walkthrough. But uh, for now, I just want to see all the the normal ones. Have I tried going to North Pole after sending me a rude email yet? No, I haven't, but let's do it vanilla style. Actually, before we do that, I want to see what happens if you go to the North Pole. Yeah, just do that. Uh, yeah. You decide that the only way to make sure that the letter isn't read by Santa Claus is to travel straight to the center of the Arctic Circle and, and intercept it yourself. 
Now, the question is, how are you going to get there? You've got several options. Charter a plane, stow away on a freighter, take the bus, take the Polar Express. I, I, I kind of want to take the bus. I'm sorry. I really want to take the bus. You said it would be in your best interest to take the bus to get to the North Pole. Sure, it might sound illogical or even impossible, but uh, just go with it, okay? So you head to the nearest bus station where a crusty-looking guy sits behind the ticket counter. Where you wanna go, bub? The North Pole, you reply, and my name's not Bubsy. That's the guy with the exclamation mark shirt. Yeah, yeah, whatever, grumbles the ticket, man. He pun- He punches- in your request, I thought he punches me in the head. <laughs> he punches in your tick in your request and, and brings you out a ticket. You're just in time. Number 27 should be pulling in any moment now. Sure enough, shortly after you sit down, you see the 27 bus pull up. You hurry over and climb aboard and drive your ticket. Huh, that's funny. You seem to be the only you seem to be the only one taking the North Pole Express. Well, whatever the case, you find yourself a seat and sit down. Oh. Oh, I feel bad. The bus pulls out of the station, slowly heading for its destination. Next stop, North Pole. <laughs> oh, shit! Damn it! Ah, I didn't expect the, the dialogue to do that. Alright, whatever. Windows gazing up and down the aisle, looking up towards the metallic ceiling, craning your head to blah, 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 blah. Nope, nothing really anything interesting to look at. Oh, well. Might as well just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Let's turn into a fucking Tundra bus. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. <sighs> you just start to think about what Joel will say when you tell him that you went all the way up to the North Pole just to make sure he'd still have a good Christmas. Or a garbage feel, you picture him saying, wearing a wacky Christmas sweater and a Santa hat. You're not such a shit, shit cat after all. Oh shucks, Come, comes your reply. Anything for you, Joel. You're the funniest, coolest, most talented, best friend a cartoon cat could ever, ever hope for. Uh, why, did I climb the highest mountain, swim to the deepest ocean, even travel to the farthest star? Just to know I made you happy. You're my bestest pal in the whole wide world. Merry Christmas, Garbage Field, he'll say. You truly are my best friend. I'll never forget what you did for me. Not ever. Oh, man, wouldn't that just be sweet? You always wanted to hear Joel say that. Or, you know, at least something nice. Usually it's, you shit cat, this, and shut the fuck up, that. I mean, is it really your fault? You're kind of annoying sometimes? Probably, but still. Ah, whatever. At this point, you'll just be happy if he just doesn't get angry. <laughs> a miserable fucking trip. Oh god. Oh lord. You look down at your feet and wiggle your toes. Well, actually, they're really more paws than feet, aren't they? You're a cat, after all. Or at least some sort of cartoon cat, anyhow. But... Are they called toes when it comes out to paws? And what about you call your fingers? Do you have two arms and two legs? Or are they both considered legs and you've got sort of... You sort of adapted them to do different tasks? I guess you have to consider them to arms and legs because of your bipedal locomotion. Walking upright like you're a person or something like that. For that matter, are you a person? I mean, certainly you're not a human. But that doesn't necessarily stop to other things from bearing, being recognized as people. Look at that AI robot that gained citizenship in the Middle East. <laughs> or the episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where Captain Picard has to prove to a Federation judge that Data should be considered a person despite being only a machine. That was a really good episode. By the way, <laughs> one of the best, really. And remember that one where Data builds a daughter and the Starfleet guy tries to take her away? Yeah, I was watching that, like, last night. Uh, that one always hits right in the feels. Frankly, Denise Crosby made a big mistake walking away from the show in the first season. Yeah, but then she got retconned to be, be in it a couple more times as, uh... What the fuck, that Romulan, um... Uh, lady, fuck. And she was in... Uh, not Tomorrow's Enterprise, she was in, uh, uh, fuck is that episode called, uh, it's in season three, I believe, uh, and it's where Guinan, oh, fuck, I'm sorry, sorry, <laughs> oops, oops, it only, they only, it only got better from there, anyway, philosophy, I guess you'd be a, actually, any, oh, hang on, anyhow, philosophically, that might be a clue, I guess you'd be a person, after all, 
You possess the qualities that Captain Picard says. Quality, a being to be recognized as a person. Okay. Qualify, sorry. Intelligence, self-awareness, consciousness. So what then truly differentiates you from the bus de driver? From the man selling tickets? From Joel? I don't know. All this thinking has given you a headache. Maybe it's best to just let sleeping dogs lie on this particular school of thought and come back to it later. For now, hey, just kind of wait for the bus to get to the North Pole. <laughs> okay. Oh, good lord! Jesus! Am I stuck here? You find yourself wondering what would happen in a fight, Goku or crippling depression? Well, if you go by canon sources from Dragon Ball Z, a Saiyan warrior gains strength every time they get beaten down, so while Goku couldn't necessarily attack crippling depression with a Kamehameha wave, failing to beat it would simply make him stronger, wouldn't it? Another point is in crippling depression favor is that, oh my god, what the... Goku lives in an isolated, but in an isolated... Ja, 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 ja. Ah! Oh God! I don't take the fucking bus. Do not take the bus. Oh God! Oh, oh! Thank God! Finally, after what feels like an eternity, the bus pulls up the North Pole. Yes, it's. You step off the bus. However, you notice something awful. The few elves who appear to be working today are operating candy presses, making chocolates and chocolate little hearts with cute sayings on them. One of the elves steps over to the bus and holds up holds a hand out, shaking his head. Sorry, pal, he grumbles. Santa's workshop's not open at the public this early in the season. We're contracted out to help to We've contracted out to help prepare for other holidays this time of year. And we're way behind getting all these candies ready for Valentine's Day. Wait, what? Valentine's Day? Sure, the bus rides to North Pole took a hell of a lot of time, but really? Over a month? Oh no, you do realize that this means right to... The only way back is to ride the bus on its return trip. Oh. I'll spare you the return trip, and I just say that you've completely bought it. Joel's Christmas was probably already ruined by the time you found that sticky black stuff under your seat. Or maybe when are you... Or <laughs> when you saw that bug. Anyway, thanks for the playing... Thanks for playing Penn and Teller's Arctic Bus! It's been a blast! Oh. Ah. Uh. Oh. Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. And time! Okay, so again, I can't really... I'm sure some of these equate into like getting the um, the final ending or whatever, but I just want to see what what's up here, you know. Let's leave the apartment again. Let's get to the North Pole, but let's take a plane this time. Okay, uh, it would probably take be the fastest to take a plane to the North Pole with no time to lose. You move to the nearest airport and make your way to the service. A young woman calls over to your spot and along the desk in order to set in a hurry. Hello there, she says with a smile. How may I help you? You tell her that you need to charter a flight because it's fallen upon you to save Christmas. My, my, says the ticket girl, her voice so full of saccharine sweetness that she's worried she'll give you diabetes. It sounds like you're on an important mission. And where do you want ha and where do you have to go to save Christmas? Now, actually, that's a good question. Uh, sure, you could go to the North Pole and intercept that letter, but what if you could cut Santa out of the equation altogether and just get Joel something special yourself? You could go to a foreign land and get him something wonderful. So where do you want to go? Oh, Jesus. Okay, we're saving. We can go to the North Pole. We can go to Japan, Russia, America, or... Where's that? Where's that? Africa or the Gobi Desert. America, America, America. <sighs> okay. You know, Joel's always saying he'd love to visit America. Obviously, you can't fly him there, but you can go there and bring him a little bit of the. Br <laughs> you could, you could go there and bring a little bit of it back for him. Plus, you know, some of those Mike and Ikes that he's so fond of, they're always a little fruit-flavored pills. It's great. 
Boarding takes a while, but it's no big deal. Eventually, you go on the plane, find your seat, and relax. After takeoff, you help yourself to some of those wonderful airline peanuts you've heard so much talk about. And then you get some headphones to hear the audio of the in-flight movie. It's a film you've never heard of before called Santa with Muscles, starring Hulk Hogan. I have seen that. Oh god, apparently in the film, Hogan is playing an evil billionaire who loses his memory and comes to believe that he is Santa Claus and then flies... and then fights crime and saves Christmas. Why have you never heard of this before? It sounds amazing! Spoilers, it wasn't. At all. Anyhow, after several hours, the plane finally lands at LA... at LA Guardia International Airport in Queens, New York. At last... Is it La Guardia or LA? I, I don't know, I don't have any reference point for this. Is la, la, la? Okay. At least, well, Los Angeles isn't in fucking New York, so hey. I don't know, man. I fuck whatever. The snow in America, in America. Okay, there we go. Okay, anyway, at last you'll be able to get Joel a little st taste of the states. Your heart pounding with excitement, you rush out of the plane and make for the gate. However, your excitement is short-lived. Seeing you hurrying off the plane with no luggage and no clothes on and the American TSA agent to spot that you're a suspicious individual and detain you for indefinitely for questioning. You try and explain that you're on a mission to save Christmas, but your words fall on deaf ears. Oh god, they lock you in a supply closet that was converted to a makeshift calling cell? What? But no one's... <laughs> the one thing is clear. You're not gonna see a Christmas, but... <laughs> what the fuck, Zero? No, 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 no. Jesus, man. <laughs> what the fuck? You lost. The quest is over. You did not find the Christmas of Gingle. If the kingdom will forever go be enshrined in darkness. Jesus! Six of Monopoly shit, man. This game is pretty fucking dark. <sighs> Alright, well... Japan? Japan. You know, Joel's been to Japan a few times, and he always brings back some more fond memories each time he goes. What a better way to give him a Christmas he'll fondly remember than traveling there yourself and finding him the perfect gift. It's the same. After taking your ticket, you make your way to the flight gate and wait for the boarding to begin. It's a bit of a wait, but nothing too terrible. Once aboard, you find your seat, get comfortable, and order up yourself a nice bag of peanuts. <laughs> so they're all different movies. You also notice that you also decide to watch today's in-flight movie, which is Santa's Slay, a movie you'd never have expected to watch on an airplane, if we're being honest. Have you ever wanted to see an evil, demonic Santa played by Bill Goldberg, a Jewish wrestler murderer, Fran Drescher, and Chris Catan? No, you hadn't thought so either, but you were wrong. It's not a good movie, but it's definitely a fun movie. Okay. Eventually, your plan take. Eventually, your plan. Your plane. Plane. Touches down at the Tokyo International Airport and your depart post haste. I'm having such trouble reading tonight. I don't know. What the fuck's going on on the screen? Though it might be tempting to swing by the food court and sample some of the local versions of the same crappy fast food that's available globally. You figure it's best to get down to business. <laughs> okay, just so I remember it. Just so I remember it. Stepping out of the airport, you get yourself... You, I cannot read! What's going on? So my brain is hurt by that Flintstones thing earlier. You get your you get your first up close look at Japan, and frankly, it's quite a bit to take in, with so much hustle and bustle going on. It's looking like there's a whole lot you could get up to here. So Garbage Shield, what's the plan? We can go window shopping. We can go to Akihabara. We can become an idol singer. Become a salaryman, or more. Oh, I know where this is going. More options. Become a Super Sentai. Wander to barren wastes, or. Okay, that's it. Let's let's save. An idol? Oh Jesus. You really want this? No, I'm going to talk about it. Fuck you guys. You've heard a lot about Akihabara. With this oftentimes being described as sort of a holy land for gamers. Being how Joe's a streamer, there's gotta be something over there that'd make him an excellent gift for him. With visions of Clue Clue Land dancing in your head, you make your way there. 
Just as you pass by a place called Super Potato, you spot something slightly odd. Just ahead, you see a camera crew filming a middle-aged man in a brightly colored jumpsuit and necktie. I know who that is. Cur curious to slowly make your way closer. Yes! Yes! Kacho! Kacho! Yes! As you get closer, it suddenly hits you that this is the guy from the Japanese show that Joel watches sometimes. Dan Marino on the Kocho or something like that. Man! If you were able to get this autograph, you'd get Joel with total loose his shit. Kocho, you shout, <laughs> waving your arms frantically. Eh? The jumpsuit man turns to look at you and immediately raises his eyebrow. Darega watashi wo yonda no? Oh my god, it's really you! You're the guy from the TV show! He approaches you with a look of confusion on his face. <laughs> oh no, you say. Really, there's a clear communication issue. You don't understand a word I'm saying, do you? <laughs> Not sure where to look from here. You kind of look around in a panic, searching for something or something could help you out. Just as you're about to start shouting or something. Who can speak English? <laughs> one of the crew members steps over. He looks familiar. You think it's one of those helper dudes that has helped out at beat games before. Hello, I'm Tojima. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit. Former AD. No, it's not AP. It's AD, dude. Come on. Of Game Center CX. Can I help you? Oh yeah, oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. You reply, relief washing over you. I just want to meet my, meet the Kuchu. My best buddy and I watch a lot of the show, and I, we both think he's a really funny. Gobi neko wa anata ni aitama desu. Aitai desu. Says Tojima the Kuchu. Kare wo shonodai fan desu. Honto ni nan nante enda. <laughs> the coach thinks for a moment before continuing. Kono kimiona ikimono shoni iritai desu ka? The Kacho would like to know if you carefully if you'd care to join him for some arcade games that are shoot today. What? Oh wow, this is even better than you'd hope for. <laughs> you were just thinking you might get his autograph, but now you're gonna be on the show. Joel is gonna flip when he finds out. No way. You better believe it. I'll slug all the metal and do the Konami code in the Iron Contra affair. Okay. Karawa Zendro Yana Orokama Mono Jodes. Tojo says to the Kasho, Karawa Yo Shotto Nari Hasu Des. No way! I love this fucking game. Though, admittedly, communication is a bit weird with what requiring a, a third party. The two of you are still having a blast. Both Arena and the crew seem to be enjoying your wacky antics. The two of you enjoy uh, a rousing game of Metal Slug, and it's practically a tradition on the show. And together, you actually make it a couple of levels in before you get a game over. After that, you attempt to have a dance-off against him in Street Fighter 2 before Yoga flames your ass back into the Stone Age. Later, Arena attempts to win a canister and a dried squid from a UFO catcher, but loses it just as the, the, the lip of the prize slot. You jokingly start to climb into the machine to the hatch before the cute girl walking there stops and everyone has a good laugh. Uh, in the end, you had a great time together, and as you and as you went to leave, Arena was sure to give you one of his business cards. Satisfied that you've done your part to give Joel an unforgettable Christmas, you head back to Sweden with your wonderful memories. Christmas morning. Fuck me! Are you serious? Asked Joel hypothetically. Why didn't I get any goddamn presents? You may or may not have ruined Christmas with your drunken streaming antics. You reply, but don't worry, I've got something that might make it up to you. Oh joy, Garbage Field, he got me something. Something about his tone seems to be indicate that he's not being genuine. I can hardly wait to see what new and exciting way you found to disappoint me. No, no, this time it's gonna be different. Look what I got you. You had him the business card and he... And he sort of just lets it fall into the palm of his hand and this rolls his eyes. Wow, you got me a piece of cardboard? This is the best gift I've ever received. No, really, look what it is. Look what it is. What? Did you like wipe a booger on or something? Begrudgingly, he looks at the business card and immediately slaps the side of his face in disbelief. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Where did he get Arena's business card? 
With that, you settle in and regale Joel with the tale of your big adventure in the land of the rising sun. You happily recount every little detail, remembering the fun you have with your wistful look upon your face. It's like you're back there doing it all again. However, as you finish your story and sort of come back to reality, you notice that Joel doesn't seem to be excited about all this, you'd hope. Rather, he's looking at you with a growing expression of frustration. So you went to Japan and had a big fun adventure where you got to meet a guy who I'm a big fan of and even got to be on a show. Uh, yeah. And all the while, you know that my Christmas was in jeopardy because of something that you could have prevented. Well, I mean, uh... So while you were on the hanging, so while you were hanging out with Arena from Game Center CX, that joke later reached Santa and he decided to not give me anything for Christmas. Well, when you put it that way, and so at the end of the day, you got to have an amazing experience for the holidays that you'll never forget. And all I fucking get is a piece of goddamn card paper. You know when he puts it like that puts it that way, it does seem kind of like you shafted him on this on this deal. The idea was to get Joel a great gift to make up for his burned bridge with Santa for the year, but some somewhere along the line, or some of the way, you must have gotten some wires crossed and thought it'd make a great gift to have a good time yourself, and then tell Joel about it. Joel, look, I, I know it seems like maybe I messed up, but I, if you give me a chance, I can still fix all of this. Fix this? Fix this? Your idea of a holiday rescue was to take a vacation and have a fun time with a Japanese celebrity? And you think you can fucking fix this? I'll go get you something real special right now. You know what? That's a good idea, Joel Gross. Not actually seeming to believe his own words. Without warning, he grabs you by the scruff of the neck, carries you to the front door, throws it out, throws it open, and tosses you out. Get out of here and find me a genuine screaming bingus! And do not come back until you do. And believe me, I know a fake bingus when I see one. <laughs> he slams the door so hard, you can hear the shit rattling in nearby apartments. And you hear a deadbolt click into the place. You're definitely locked out. Left with only your meager inventory and a simple question. What the fuck is a scrimmy bingus? So it turns out the talking mini vacation and winding up one of your own friend's vacations TV shows isn't actually much of a gift for said friend. Who have thought? Apparently not you, and now, now you're paying for it by questing for some real gingle doof shit. The game is over. You were a level 7 bo bog mummy. Your favorite color was ma magenta. Your Chinese zodiac sign was the rat. Being the biggest one, you made all of the rules. Oh, okay, I, 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 I see what you did. I see. I see. Well. Let's go back to Japan real quick. I want to see the other ones soon. Fuck this. I don't know. Here's the thing. I won't be able to get everything here. But here's what I propose. We get the true ending tonight. And then post Christmas, uh, like tomorrow, we see all the other variations. Like a... Anime OST then idol. Let's see what happens without the the, the thing. All right. Um, let's see here. Where 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 is? Uh, I'm pretty bad at this retro arc. Yeah. Okay. Become an idol. While thinking about what to do in order to save Christmas, something catches your eye on the TV screen in the nearby store window. <laughs> wow. Would you look at her go? Not only is she a good singer, but look at those tightly choreographed dance moves. And hell, she's got a whole entourage of backup singers. And that's her with is just making the entire thing that much more extravagant. And look at that crowd. Boy, howdy, they're going hog wild. Though you just can't get enough of this. As you kind of glance around the rest of the window, displaying display you're looking into. You see, that the, the crowd must not be the only one either, as there's all matters of merch bearing the likeness. It is in this moment of wonderment that you make a decision. You're going to be an idol singer, too! Come hell or high water, you're going to be the next big thing. No, 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 That's bright quality. That's bright quality. And this helps me how? I'm Amy Rose now. After securing yourself a good a, <laughs> a good agent and putting in a ton of hard work and per perseverance, 
you're able to get yourself a big break, it's not long before you're doing stadium shows and drawing massive crowds of screaming fans. At this rate, you'll be performing at the Budokan in no time. Despite this, it's not all sunshines and roses. However, going into this, you had no idea how much regulation would wind up being imposed on every facet of your life. You managed to fabricate an entire persona for you, and you're required to stick to it at all times. The way you dress, the places you go, the things you eat, even the way you walk are, all no, are no longer truly yours. You might be a big star, but at the wise songwriter... <laughs> you might be a big star, but as the wise songwriter Randy Newman once warned, it's lonely at the top. Fame and fortune have isolated you from most other people <laughs> on anything but the most superficial of levels. Contractually, you can't even seem to be in public with somebody else on your own out of your own fears. The media will report you, you're dating, and hurt your fan base. <sighs> Jesus. Unfortunately for you, uh, things come to a head in a very messy way. When things start to become too much for you, you turn to your manager for emotional support. One thing leads to another, and the next thing you know, you've been spotted by a photographer for some scandal rag. Before you know it, the story's all, all over the news. The fans almost instantly turn against you, making it difficult to even show your face in public. Hoping to save your face, your manager resigns from his job and vanishes without another word. With a nobody left to book you, with no venues willing, willing to have you anyhow, your career dies screaming. Oh no! Needless to say, Garbage Field didn't take a, the sudden loss of fame well. Last I heard, the poor bastard caught... Caught trying to rob a liquor store in a what? With one of those Famicom light guns. <laughs> no! Oh, and also he didn't save Christmas. Kind of a given, but hey, thought I'd confirm it. The game is over. Not only did he, didn't you save Christmas, but you lost everything. You used to have a pretty mind. You used to have a pretty mind. God, you wish you had your pretty mind back. Okay. Well, that was depressing. I want to see this one. This has to. This has to be what I think it is. Suddenly, you realize that your life isn't filled with quite enough miserable drudgery and endless thankful toil for some huge faceless corporation's benefit. Thankfully, here in Japan, there's an ex excellent way to get yourself some of that. Congratulations, you are now a salary man. <laughs> It's just another Blake soul-sucking day in the office, and you're crunching those numbers like you wouldn't believe. You got to get this report onto Mr. Ishikawa's desk by 3.30, or he's gonna have your head. <laughs> Is that me? Is that me? <laughs> As if on cue, you suddenly hear Mr. Ishikawa's shout from his office. Garbage field! Get in here! Now! Oh boy, you really didn't now. What it is, you're not exactly sure. But you know, whatever it is, that's really got him in... But whatever it is, that is, it's ever got a few men. Not wanting to throw off more fuel onto the fire, you hightail it down the hall as fast as your stubbornly little legs will carry you. In mere moments, you're through the door, panning like the dog you know Mr. Ishikawa equates you to. <laughs> okay. Uh, you correctly him on... <laughs> you correct him on that. <laughs> and put out the jerk at. <laughs> but you don't want to make it look like any less. As if it is, you can hear, you can tell he's not pleased at HR for giving you his this position. I like how the graphical glitch gives him a big wart. All right. It's about damn time you showed up, Mr. Kyle Barks. From behind his desk, close that door and sit your ass down. We gotta have a talk about your performance as of late. With as much spine as, as the mighty ocean jellyfish, you immediately... Koto to his demands, quietly closing his office doors and slinking into the chair in front of him. It began sweating reflectively, reflexively, sorry, reflectively, um, my rating sucks tonight, as you slowly sink into the upholstery. Listen up, garbage field, and listen good. My boss is breathing down my neck about the numbers you've been sending up at the chain. He doesn't like what he's seeing. He doesn't like it at all. And what do you suppose my boss does when he's supposed... When he, when he doesn't like something that doesn't work in up my apartment is telling him, do you think he considers giving, giving me a raise? Time off to spend with my family? You think that's what he does, Garbage Field? He pounces his fist on the desk angrily, splashing a bit of lukewarm coffee from a mug nearby into a pad of sticky notes. No, of course he doesn't. He starts asking questions what he does. He starts asking hard questions. Questions about my loyalty. Questions about my management. Skills. Questions about what kind of circus I'm running down here. 
I'm not running a circus garbage field. Do I look like a ringmaster to you? Am I wearing a top hat and tails? Do you think your job is to act like a fucking clown? Because my bosses aren't laughing, garbage field. And when they're not laughing, I'm not laughing. Are you technically doing what you're supposed to be doing? I've heard from people. That I've, I've had people looking into it. And frankly, yeah, maybe you are. Royko in finance seems to think... That Royko cup of soup? Maybe that you're putting in an ad is just fine. What a fine set of legs, huh? The thing is, my bosses don't care if the numbers add up. If they're not happy with what they see, they're gonna let everyone know. And when that comes down to the chain of command to me, and I'm looking right at these problems are coming from, what am I supposed to do? Do I tell you that two plus two equals seven? <laughs> this is this is really awful. <laughs> don't think I wouldn't be <laughs> if that's what makes it that uh, the garbage field, the mathematical clown. Is that what you want to be known as? That's where this is heading. That at this rate, I had to take Marshy right into the boardroom in face paint and clown shoes and smash a damn pie around in your stupid face. I know what I must do. Lovely. Lovely. Congratulations, you drew a spine and stood up to your shitty boss. You also got arrested for assault, but hey, gotta crack a few tamagos to make an omoretsu, right? I know what that means. Even though you spent Christmas in the slammer, knowing that you failed Joel, it was worth it to see that asshole's face. So I guess you need heavy metal for this. You need heavy metal for this one. The game is over. On the next playthrough, try to find the seventh... Gem rolls of power? They're in the game, but it'll make fun to look at anyhow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna do a little BRB here. I gotta get a glass of water because I'm reading so much. But this this game is great so far, and I love it. I love all the weird endings and this and that, so... Oh, this game is, is fucking gold. I love it. Once again, great job, Zero. But we'll play more of this. I just gotta do a BRB, come back, and then... Hopefully we can find the true ending, so... You know what? Yeah. All right, we're back. All right, so. Oh boy. I don't know what. Uh, is, is, the thing is, I shouldn't have been streaming this in the morning because I'm really bad at reading. Because I, I just woke up and I wasn't ready for this like mental cacophony to be like, and then you punch your boss in the head, you know? <laughs> but I love it. I love it. You have to excuse my poor reading here, but. You know. Anyway, let's let's go out and uh, check out the new one. Um, there's so many we can try out. Um, suggestions. Uh, true ending time. I don't know what the true ending is. I'm not looking at the uh, the cheat sheet. Magic. Did we use magic? We did. No, 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 no. Let's use some magic. But let's do, uh... The Haunted Woods. Um... Haunted Castle, Haunted House. You know what? Let's, let's go see Dracula. We already did Inside My Heart. Too. You know what? Haunted Castle. You decided the best place to check out for magic is without a doubt the old Haunted Castle. After all, way back when people lived in castles, is that what that period when everybody believed in magic and wizards command, command de, commanded the respect of kings and necromancers, made them skeletons, served them drinks and shit? Oh boy. It takes you until nightfall, but you make it to the castle. However, it looks like however. As you arrive, the pale light of the moon begins to disappear behind the cover of dark clouds, and you hear the distant sound of thunder. <laughs> There's a storm coming, but a horrible night to have a curse. Four occurs, rather. Not wanting to be caught in the coming rains, you quickly swing and the rusty iron gates open and rush up to the massive wooden doors to the castle. With a soft push, the doors open with a long, eerie creak. You step inside, footsteps echoing onto the stone floor, and the door suddenly slams shut behind you. <laughs> oh boy! Things just got really spooky in here. Who would have thought that a paying a visit to the haunted castle would have turned out like this? You foam around in the dark looking for something, anything, that could... That could light your way. After a few moments, you get your grubby little mitts on an old oil lantern. 
But where are you going to get the match to light it? Oh, hey, thanks. <gasps> Wait a minute. Who handed you that match? Oh, shit. Holy fuck, it's Dracula. I knew it. It was Dracula. Oh, no. Oh, no, man. Blah, Christ the Lord of all darkness. It's me, Dracula. Ah, ah, ah. What the hell are you doing breaking into my castle? You attempt to explain yourself, but you're so scared that all comes out of your mouth is Taco Tuesday before your teeth chatter so hard you can't continue. That doesn't even make sense. How dare you enter the lair of Dracula and say such nonsense to me? For this foolhardly act, you shall suffer grave consequences. No, oh, Jesus, oh Mary, oh Gordon! Dracula's ready to strike! What am I gonna do? Oh, oh, nay, 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 nay. Use garlic breath, call the Ghostbusters, or wrestle Dracula. I should probably save state, actually. Alright, there we go. It takes a lot to save state on Retro Arcade. Alright. You want him to call the Ghostbusters? Let's call the Ghostbusters. Well, there's something strange in your neighborhood. I think you better call. Thinking quickly, you grab the receiver off a nearby novelty phone. It looks like a skeleton holding a bone. How cute. And dial that familiar number. Dracula hisses, baring his fangs, but you respond by sh shooshing him and indicating that you're in on the, f <laughs> you're on the phone. <laughs> No way. He raises an eyebrow and stops dead. Apparently shunned by the fact that you're making a phone call mid-murder. After a few rings, the other <laughs> the other end picks up. Hello, Ghostbusters. Answers woman voice on the other end. Yeah, you say, looking at Dracula nervously. I've got this kind of a problem in this old haunted castle. Like, I, 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 maybe I'm gonna die kind of problem. Uh-huh. The woman replies. Oh my god, the song. The strange. In the neighborhood, I'm gonna call Ghostbusters! Oh my god. Same fucking tune, same fucking tune! Sounded rather uninterested, considering you just said your life is in danger. Oh, it's the same fucking, it's the AVG and Ghostbusters, yes, 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 awesome! Can you describe the apparition in the manner in which you're being threatened? Well, I, uh, it's Dracula. Yeah, you tell her. Looking the Lord of the All Darkness up and down. Skinny about the average height, wearing a black tux and a red line cape. Possibly crushed velvet. Hold on. She responds with a twinge of confusion in her voice. You mean Count Dracula? As in a flesh and a blood physical being? Yeah, I guess, you stammer. Look at an increasingly impatient vampire with his arms crossed and tapping his foot. I mean, I don't know. If a vampire's have blood per se, but. Sir, we're called the Ghostbusters for a reason, the woman says, audibly annoyed with you. We don't deal with monsters, we deal with ghosts. Now, if it were maybe Dracula's ghost we were able to talk talking about here, I could schedule an appointment. But it sounds to me that you're just kind of uh, just wasting our time. But I'm really in trouble here! You fumble to say, knees knocking in fright. You, you guys just can't... I'm sorry, sir, but the answer is no. Christmas is a busy time of year for us. <laughs> With all the season holiday depression and drunk drivers and whatnot. So we don't have time to waste firing nuclear particles accelerators at vampires. Just try and have a nice day, okay? The line goes dead. Well, Dracula impatiently asks... Dra impa Dracula asks impatiently, glancing at his watch. Are we going to do this or what? You sigh in defeat and tilt your head to the one side, you're reeling your neck. Yeah, go ahead. With that, he swoops in on you and chomps you right in the old jugular. I guess busting your artery open in the mouth it makes him feel good. <laughs> but as far as you leaves, a lot of it is hired. You quickly pass out from pain and blood loss. You bought it on nothing more than a shambling reanimated corpse, serving every whim of Count Dracula. Your ghost is free to haunt whoever, you know, place, or, you know, you could just take a nap. In an invisible bed. A freaky ghost bed. You failed to get a good ending this time. Maybe next time you should, I don't know, maybe try something that doesn't involve the spirits of the damned. Oh, Jesus. Let's try that again. Let's l wrestle Dracula. 
Something deep down in your primordial memory suddenly sparks life, perhaps imbued with the spirits of your noble ancestors, fearlessly haunting prey in the wild. You hold an arm out with a hand in a stop position. Bewildered Dracula stops dead in his tracks. Alright, Fangface, enough's enough. You growl, ears pinned back to the show <laughs> to show you mean business. You wanna take me down? You do it in the ring! I beg your pardon! Your girl and advance towards him, claws extended a baffingly and uncharacteristic display of bravado. You heard me, Dracula. If you want to throw it down with garbage feel, we're gonna have to take it to the mat. I see, says Dracula. Rubbing his chin. You want a fair fight, man to man, or vampire to cartoon cat? You nod. Fine, then let us do this like Brutus. Okay. Hello out there. All you sport fans, and welcome to the other bone chilling edition of WrestleMania! <laughs> I'm your commentator, Big Jim Tarantella, and with me always is my good friend Frankenstein. Oh, Frankenstein, happy to be here, Jim! Ah, what a pleasure as always, Frankenstein. Anyhow, tonight's main event is a matchup unlike anything we've ever seen in this arena before. Count Dracula, the Lord of Darkness and undefeated champion of this event, faces up against a plucky cartoon cat with only who only wants to save Christmas, Garbage Field. I don't know about you, Frankie, but my money says that this fight is going to swing in the Dark Lord's direction right out of the gate. It's starting to look a lot like um starting to look a lot like celebrity deathmatch. Oh, garbage field wild card. Maybe small, but has a lot of heart. You may just be onto something there, big guy. What it may like your physical strength, character, and stage presence makes up more than. <laughs> he makes up. He more than makes up with his fighting spirit. Err, Frankenstein, agree. Whatever the case may be, it looks like the bat is just about to, ready to start. So sit back and get ready for the matchup of the century, at least this evening. Well, this is it, Garbage Field. You and Dracula are going head to head to find out who's going to be the king of the ring. If you lose, you'll have all your blood sucked out and become nothing more than a mindless zombie. If you win, you'll... Uh, did you ever figure out what you get if you win? Before <laughs> before you have time to think about it, the bell rings. Bing, bing, bing. And there's the bell. Right at the gate. The two opponents are already grappling one each other. Urgh, possibly gripping. Ha, ah, right you are, Frankenstein. It looks like they're... Oh, wait a minute. Is that... Oh my god, he did it! Oh, he did! Unbelievable! Garbage field headbutts Dracula in the stomach, and now <laughs> that he's broken away, it looks like he's running from the ropes. Oh, garbage field style unorthodox, unpredictable. Indeed, never before have I ever seen such a small opponent attempting a running clothesline off the ropes. And he, wow, he hits him in the knees, and unbelievably, he's knocked Dracula flat on his back! <laughs> the glitch! And now, he's up on the turnbuckle! Lord of mercy, he's already going for a diving move, and, oh, a flying elbow right onto the Dracula's chest! In the symphony of the night, this crazy cartoon cat is conducting our front of blood. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Err, additional Castlevania reference. Wait a minute. Dracula's... Dracula's not out on his back. Not on this one yet. He's straight up on his feet. Like something out of a horror film. And now his garbage field on a full Nelson. He's lifting up. Oh, lifting up and... Oh, right onto the atomic drop. Err, atomic drop. Bad. Bad for the cartoon cat, maybe. But it looks like in this sl slam, just... B in this slam, you just put out Dracula's control out of his fight. Garbage feels badly staggered. He's back on his feet, but he's having a hell of a time staying there. <sighs> whatever primal, whatever primal instinct Garbage Field had going into this fight, it must have been literally just been knocked right out of a, him. This is going to be a bloodbath, literally. I don't even think Dracula is going to put him down for the count at this point. Why bother? There are no rules in the fight where the guy doing the fighting is an ancient evil thing that has plagued humanity for centuries. Oh no. What? But wait a minute. What's this? Just when it looked like it was all over, a surprise guest has entered the arena. Who's this mystery man? Are they friend or foe? Err, Frankenstein on edge of seat. Oh my god! It's Volk Bogan! Er, Bogan good, kind of. 
I'd never believe the miracles living in the constant existential dread that is commentating on never ending battles between the masters of evil and whatever poor rubes he lured into the ring with him, knowing full well it would end in their blood being drank, but I believe in them now. This criminally insane ex-con is a wild card among wild cards. There's no telling what he's bringing into this fight! Is that- is that- it is! He's firing a machine gun at Dracula! <laughs> A reckless tactic, considering this is crowded, it's a crowded arena, but undeniably effective. Of course, they won't be keep Dracula down unless Bogan's done his own work. Oh yes, Bogan mumbles to the commentators. The bullets are made of from recycled silver cross, and I quote them in oh, the bullets are made from recycled silver cross, and I quote them in the garlic. What a day to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it from here. You heard it here first. The man is free from the curse of Count Dracula. The lord of all darkness is slain in the man. And a new era of peace dawns from all mankind. In all my years of commentating, never before have I been so overjoyed. Er, Frankenstein's sad to see one of the greatest pass on. But Frankenstein's trying to be supportive of Jim's feelings. Finally, I can return home to my wife and children. Hopefully, Deb hasn't remarried, assuming I died on that fateful night ten years ago? With that terrible possibility in mind, good night, everyone, and may we only see Count Dracula again in hell. Picking you up and cr cradling you against his bare chest, Bogan asks you, Is Kitty Cat okay? You give a smile and a thumbs up. Granted, you're not entirely sure <laughs> why you've been as <laughs> why you've been beating completely senseless, but hey. Kitty Cat is brave. The maniac mumbles. Kitty Cat is come with Bogan and gone many wild adventures. Hey, you know what? Maybe it's just the blood your brain is floating in right now. But that sounds like a great idea to you. Joel's idea of adventuring is going to sustain belong it when it's a snowy out. <laughs> and let's not forget, he's never really liked you much. He, he might be a danger to himself and others, but at least Bogan is treating you nice. Sure, whatever you say. A bit of blood dripping out of your mouth. Okay, get to get, he replies. Wrapping you around his back like a knapsack. Bogan away. And with that, Bulk Bogan le leapt from the ring and carried you off into the night. Through this world, Bogan showed you the true meaning of adventure. And the two of you become the best fr became the best of friends while solving mysteries, fighting the force of evil, and learning how to love again. Will we ever see them again? Will Bogan and Garbage feel return to, say, fight an evil army of space monsters bent on world domination? Or perhaps the fallen evil billionaires attempt to destroy the moon? Who can say for sure? And after Joel, well, with his Christmas ruin and nobody there to awkwardly attempt to console him, he finally came to an understanding. He came to understand how much of that shit cat really meant to him. Blame himself for Garbage Field's disappearance. He decided he dedicated the rest of his life to rescuing abandoned cats and giving them a lovely home. Amazingly, this stupid WrestleMania joke ended up turning up into a good, heartwarming ending. Bet you fuckers didn't see that coming, did ya? The game is over. You didn't get the canon ending, but hey, this one was pretty good, wasn't it? I'm definitely gonna make some WrestleVania shirts and put them on Redbubble or something. Don't. Okay. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. So there's a, there's a better ending than that? Holy shit. Damn. Man, this game is full of adventure, huh? A literal meme house prequel. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's see, what else did I do? Uh, load state. Was it garlic breath? Ah, oh, that's right. You made yourself you made yourself that garlic Alfredo for dinner last night. And you left the apartment without brushing your teeth. Like a dragon facing down a bold knight. You face Dracula, open your mouth wide, and blow your deadly breath weapon straight into the vampire's face. Eat death, you blood-sucking monster! Or rather than shriveling up and die, rather than shriveling up and die, Dracula kinda just stops dead in his tracks and his eyes instantly widen in water. If this were a cartoon, you'd expected to hear that comical glass-shattering sound. I would have said, glass-shattering sound and Holy Christ! Holy Christ! The vampire says, reeling back in disgust. Are you kid Nikki? Because you've got some serious death breath. Okay, you give an awkward grin and shrug. Okay, God damn, I'm going to lose my lunch. 
He continues, punching his nose shut. You get out of here, Grosso. Get out and stay out. Before you have a chance to respond, he puts his hand on your shoulders and hurriedly pushes you back out of the door, slamming it behind you. You even hear a deadbolt click into the place. Man, you'd think you'd try to kill him or something. Oh, wait. Well, whatever the case, you didn't find any magic here. Guess it'd be wise to head somewhere else before anything else bad happens to you. Get, get, get while the getting's good and all that jazz. That, right, well, so much for that. Looks like all that anger Shadow Dracula did tipped off the creature of the night that uninvited guest was about to be turned out. That an uninvited guest was about to be turned out to them. Needless to say, the woolly bullies and boogeymen and inter interdimensional shamblers. Ooh, okay. Waiting at the DOS prompt to heal limb from limb and devour the gooey red stuff from inside of you. Congratulations, you died. I'm sure the folks at home will be thrilled to hear the tale of your untimely demise. A little something, something to interrupt the dready drag of the day-to-day -day life, you know. Okay. Oh my god. Alright, well. I was gonna, I'm gonna skip to the Christmas DOS games in 20 minutes, but, I mean, this game is so fucking good that I'm like... I don't know, I should play this all night. Oh, damn it. I wonder if I can use Sue Strumming on, um... On Dracula. Maybe that could kill him? Let's try that. Fuck it, let's try that. Let's try it. Something happens. Okay, um... You can and should. Okay. I figured. No, no. Oh, fuck. I fucked up. Ah, damn it. Let's just, let's just reset this. Oops. Big brain. Alright. Sorry. Sometimes I press A too quick. There we go. Oh, we already did this one. Uh, no, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. Leave. Alright. So you're strumming on the plane? Oh, that could be funny! Okay. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna use magic. And we're gonna go to the haunted castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Dracula's back. Yeah. Um... You Sir Strumming? Yes! Yes, it works! Okay. Thinking quickly, you grab the can of Sir Strumming from your inventory and ready it for a cunning maneuver. As Dracula lunges towards your throat, you hastily thrust the can of Sir Strumming right in his path of travel. Before he realizes what you're doing, it's too late. He's bit it right into it instead of your neck flesh. Not only does this hurt you like hell, not only does this hurt like hell, you try to you you try biting through a tin can. You try biting through a kid, tin can, but Dracula immediately regrets making this mistake. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> he yells. His speech slurred because there's a can of, can of blocking from properly using his mouth. What the hell did I just bite into? What is this rich taste oozing past my fangs? It's every Swede's favorite treat, you reply, a smug grin crossing your face. Yes, relax and savor the flavor of Sue Streaming! Holy fuck! Dracula cries desperately, trying to wrench his jaws off the can and trying to spit the fermented fish ooze out. This can't be happening! Oh no! No, no, no! <laughs> you turn to run away, but something is off here. Sure, a lot of foreigners seem to have a real problem with serious driving, but uh, how many of them begin smoking from the place of the from from the place that the fermented fish touches? Do you realize what you've done? He gargles. Oh, do you realize what you've done? He gargles. His body slowly collapsing to the floor. Don't you know why this ancient Swedes invented surströving? You shake your head, honestly starting to feel kind of guilty for what you're witnessing. It was your intention to use this as a distraction to escape, but... Uh, this is going to... going south real quick. Nobody was ever meant to eat this fishy slime! You fool! Dracula moans. The very flesh of his fangs begin to dis disintegrate. An army of my kind attempted to conquer Sweden centuries ago. But the brightest of your alchemists created Sustrumming as a chemical weapon to destroy us. It is like liquid fire straight from Satan's bowels. 
Even now I feel every cell in my body screaming in agony as they melt and burst one by one! We had hoped that once the history had been forgotten and your Swedes viewed it only as a culinary delight that we'd never face this unimaginable torture again, but... He began choking and coughing, struggling to keep talking to you. His hand grasping at, at your neck, weak as a child, as he stares straight into your eyes as his own... They become cloudy and blood... blood uh, what? <laughs> Sorry, the, this image is so stupid. Look at it. <laughs> I can't... I, I, I'm gonna attempt to read this. What did I... What did I have the strength? I would make you pay dearly for what you have done, but that's no longer a possibility. You have done in a moment of panic what countless souls have failed to do for hundreds of years. I'm slain, cat, and with my dying breath, I, I... Whatever terrible, vengeful curse intended to place on you, it was too late. Too late. Too little, too late. You watch in horror as what's left of Dracula's body suddenly ceases. It becomes totally unresponsive. Even after death, the effects of the surstrumming continue his body sizzling and smoking as his flesh melts away. As the remainder of his flesh sizzles away, leaving behind <laughs> nothing but a fangled skeleton, one of Dracula's hunchback minions wanders into the room, carrying a tray, which he quickly drops upon seeing the master's smoking corpse upon the floor. The undead thrall rushes over and cradles the body up, shaking him in a bit to try and get him to respond. Is that courage? <laughs> but nothing. He then turns to face you, eyes wide like saucers. You, you kill him. You kill master. You kill down regular. I'm sorry. You shot in that panic. It was an accident. I swear. Sorry, sorry. You slain the master of darkness, the lord of all evil, and all you gotta say is sorry. I, I, uh. You stammer, trying to think of some way to spin this in a way that absolves you of any guilt. I don't think you understand exactly what you've done, the hunchback minion says, as this is all going on. Further undead minions peek on through the doorways leading into the room. Okay. You freed, you freed us from this tyranny of Count Dracula, he cries as the other monsters pour into the room. Hopping and hollering with unbridled joy. By the loss of our kind, now you are your kind and godly king. Is that a maid mummy? This sudden turn of events causes your jaw to drop and hang open. You're left utterly speechless as you struggle to understand what's just happened. First you actually killed Dracula, and now his servants say you're the new masters? Tell us, good cartoon cat, asked the hunchback. What is your name of which you call your mom? Garbage field, you blurb. But listen, I... Three cheer for garbage field. <sighs> Christ a skeleton with a broom. <laughs> All at once, you're surrounded by the group of fiends and they lift you above their heads and began to cheer. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! The procession of monsters joyously carry <laughs> joyously carries you out into the castle, through dusty corridors and ancient rooms, until you arrive in a great chamber with a throne at the other side. They rush you over to it and dump you into the seat, and then immediately step back and bow to you. With great ceremony, the hunchback from before makes his way up to you through the crowd, drops you to a single knee and offers you a golden scepter ending in a skull with ruby eyes. My lord, he says in a ceremonial tone, as he can. With the scepter, we pass on to you, the throne of this kingdom. You are now Garbagefield the first, King of Drac Dracolania. Of course, it's not much of these days. Lord Dracula pretty much only has this winter castle in his original in Romania, but he, he better mean to build a summer house in Barbados, but he never planned, but yet, yeah, humble as it may be, our kingdom is yours! This has all happened so fast. One minute you're about to die because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. The next you're about in, you're, you're the Night King. As you begin to really process it all, it finally hits you. You live in a haunted castle now. Holy shit, you live in a haunted castle now. My loyal subjects, you say, taking the scepter in your hand and r rising from your throne. My understanding is that Count Dracula treated you pretty crappy. Sometimes you come into the wine cellar, look right at me sweeping the floor and drop a, s drop a bottle, says a skeleton. He liked to ask me for a cup of tea, even though I knew full well I hated the stuff. Then when I brought it up to him, he'd throw it away, throw it in my face and tell me to get him some coffee instead. Adds a mummy dressed as a maid. 
He made me watch him go to the bathroom. <laughs> Shots a fishman in a very traumatized tone. I don't know why, he just kept telling me I had to. Well, no more, you tell them. I promise you treat you fairly. No longer will you be slaves. You are my new friends, and this castle is just as your home as it is mine. I mean, really, you guys seem so nice for a bunch of monsters. Anyhow, I tell you what. I'm gonna do... Tell you what I'm gonna do. I've got to get my going back to my current residence so I can tell my bestest buddy the good news. You stop for a minute and think about it. Actually, expect... Expect me back on December 25th and be ready to surprise the guest. With that, the monsters once again cheer for you wildly. You shake so many hands and you start away... You start... <laughs> You, you shake so many hands your way out that your fingers start to go numb and the fishman begins to cry as you pass him and runs into you and gives you a hug Man, you're gonna have to look into getting that poor guy some therapy or something as you step out the door You wave goodbye to your grateful subjects and head back to Joe's place until Christmas Day Oh boy Son of a bitch, Joel says angrily. Where are my presents? Oh god, Joel say this is trying to hide your excitement <laughs> forget about it I have a present so much better than anything that might have been under that tree yeah right he replies rolling his eyes what do you get me this year a macaroni portrait one of those fucking dancing musical snowmen you can get at the goddamn drugstore no way man look just put all on this blindfold and take my hand and I'll take you take you to your present a blindfold whoa now garbage field I'm not into that shit I mean, at least not with you. You shut up and put it on! Okay, Grumbles, reluctantly trying it around his face. But if this turns into some bird box shit, I'm out of here. After taking a short cab ride just out of town to the old haunted castle, you tell Joel that he can take his blindfold off. As he unties it and gazes out the castle, he's confused. Why the fuck did you bring me to an old castle, he asks. And since when is there an old castle just outside town? It's not just any castle, Joel. You shout, unable to contain your excitement anymore. It's my castle! And I want you to come up and move in with me. He turns to you, ready to yell at your face for... Ready to yell at you for the stupid joke you're trying to put, put on him. Uh, but when he sees you... But when he sees the genuine look of happiness on your face, his eyes immediately widen. You're... You're serious? Yeah, Joel, it's awesome, you tell him, practically shaking. Not only do we get this kind of ca don't we get this castle, but I'm the kind of a whole bunch of monsters. But I'm the king of a whole bunch of monsters. They're gonna live with us and help us keep the place tidy and be our best friends. No shit, do we... Are the skeletons? Oh man, yeah, so many skeletons. And mummies and werewolves and zombies and hunchbacks and... Garbage field, I, I never thought I was gonna say this, but you're... You're my dude, little guy. Validation! Validation at last! Jolie finally likes you! Holy shit! Not wanting to, to waste this chance, you jump into Joel's arms and give him a big hug. And it scratches you a little behind the ears. Together, two of you step inside and meet your new subjects. You introduce Joel to your monster friends, and they're instantly impressed. Apparently, Dracula watched a lot of Joel's streams. Oh, okay. Like a microphone. And they're a little like, excited that an internet celebrity is moving to the castle. Internet celebrity? Joel just excited that he gets to hang out with skeletons. This is fucking rad, Joel laughs. I can't believe this is happening. Now I can play skeleton metal for real fucking skeletons. Merry Christmas, Joel. Merry Christmas, you fucking amazing cat. And Joel, Garbage Field, and their ha monstrous friends live happily ever after in their kingdom of the dead. Congratulations, you got an ending. Sadly, not the real ending, though. Since this one was so good, though, have a hint. Oh, try an option that requires traveling. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. Hmm. Christmas time, Christmas time. Fart. Okay. Well, I fucking love this game. I, th th this might be my game of the year. <laughs> like this is this is fantastic. I, man. Okay, traveling, huh? Hmm. Well. All right. Now listen to the anime OST. Let's do that super quick. Let's do that super quick. Let's do uh, listen to tunes. And. 
Super quick. And then let's go to Japan. The fuck? Did I fuck up? No, I didn't. I didn't. Gotta be careful so I don't select the wrong thing here. Did I select the wrong thing? Oh. Oh. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm still good. I'm still good. Okay, now I'm become an idol singer. Let's, let's save here just in case. Just in case it fucks up. Okay. Okay, let's see if anything's different here. Okay. Oh, I don't think it is different. Oh, no, it isn't different! Oh! Shit! Maybe Super Sentai. Hang on. I don't know what the original looks like, so whatever. Okay. Here we go. Hold on. Maybe you're just not thinking big enough right now. After all, saving Christmas for one person isn't that big of a deal. Kind of just a drop in the bucket as far as the rest of the world is concerned, really. No, you want something bigger, something better. And if you want all that, then Japan's got the perfect solution for you. The time-honored trade of the Super Sentai. <laughs> if I cut you, save the day all that throughout the mid-Pacific Rim? Who could say no to that? Oh my god. After a quick visit to the co local costume shop and a convoluted series of events involving aliens, robots in the future, ancient demons, ghosts, and cool motorcycles, you're ready to join the ranks of Japan's greatest heroes and fight for the everlasting peace. Of course, the trouble is... Of course, the trouble is there's currently no trouble. I guess this is the part of the TV... Ne the TV never shows you, huh? The only thing you can do is wait for some gigantic hideous mutation to show up. Might want to grab some lunch or something. Oh, that's, that is the shittiest Power Rangers thing ever. <laughs> Just as you'd hope. Winning around has paid off. A massive beast lumbers out of the sea and begins stomping around towards Tokyo. Man, what is it about this country that draws these things in? Is it those wacky game shows, the video games, the karaoke? Whatever, there's no time to think about that now. As a newly minted Super Sentai, it's time to spring into action. With no time to lose, you spring outside to the nearest wide open area and do your magical space dance. Going to match the monster size. <laughs> uh, the Giganto Beast grows in a naturally flanked voice. Who dares to oppose the servant of the Iron Death Regiment? Who serves the mechanical masses from the planet Zeus? I am Garbage Field, Z, the defender of truth and justice who carries on the legacy of those galactic heroes, Kosu Kosubaka, whose strength of character and fighting spirit flows through my soul as I river through the mountains. Kosubaka was no match for the Iron Death Regiment. His terrible fate was sealed by none other than my direct superior, the Dark Lord Hanyono of the Thousand Edged Blade. To think that a mere earthquake should make a pitiful attempt at taking up his mantle would stand in a chance against I, Kaijin, the titanic beast from hell! Though I, I knew of him only for one this short period. Though I only knew... I knew him only for this short period he remained alive after I found his upper body in that haunted cast cave. I knew that the galactic hero Kosobaka was the greatest spaceman who I ever met. And to carry on his quest for ultimate justice throughout the universe is my privilege. If you believe that simply, if you believe that simply by obtaining the galactic hero power, that you can truly, I'm like, there's so much fucking dialogue. <sighs> it's just like the show. <sighs> the Zeus Empire will crush this pathetic earth of yours on the foot like the insect that you are. Look, can we stop dumping pointless exposition and just fight already? Yeah, all right. Oh, oh? What will I do? Oh! Oh! Special? Is that special because I have anime power? Let, let's do it normal first. Then. Garbage Field missed Kaijin Channel Dark Magic to, to itself. A heals. Oh. This actually turned to a real game now? Oh my god, what? No way, you... 
this actually works now? Oh shit, this is bad. Maybe defend? Do another special. Strikes a heroic pose and fires a power OB from his hands. Can I use spam special? Yes, I can! Oh shit. Oh, this is bad. Oh, man. The enemy OST actually makes this fight easier by giving you 150 HP instead of 100. Oh, really? They're not special here. Garfield Z is an anxiety attack, but it wasn't very effective. Oh shit, he's healing. Oh, I'm about to die here. Mighty last boomerang. Come on, I can do this. Gathers energy from the cosmos. Oh, I he I'm healing up! Oh shit, it's got twice my health almost. Shit, we're at a stalemate here. Critical hit? Oh shit, I'm about to die, man! Oh no, I'm dead! Garbage Field lost all of his fighting spirit. And that was the end for Garbage Field Z. Killed by Kaijin, the titanic beast from hell. Remember the Iron Death Regiment? Yeah, 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 you get it. The point is that Garbage Field Z is no more, and the Mid-Pacific Rim will be hereafter terrorized by many hideous monsters. The game is over, frankly, it didn't do a very good job. Next time, should you go through this route again? Maybe try doing a better job? I saved. I'm just gonna spam a special. <laughs> and hopefully get lucky. <laughs> Maybe I gotta defend more, I don't know. It's like a risk. Sometimes I have an anxiety attack, sometimes I, I, I do damage. Oh, it seems better this time. Oh, he, he, he's got way less than I am now. I'm winning! Come on. <gasps> I'm gonna do it! Special attack! Garfield strikes a heroic pose and fires a powerful bee from his hands. Yes! Kaijin has been defeated! I win! Level 2. <laughs> Max PP. Gumption. Sepul Sepulchritude? Anxiety went through the roof. Cosmic thunder. I learned how to love again. Congratulations, Garbage Field. You saved Japan from the evil kaijin, the titanic beast from hell, and proven the justice of our culture. Uh, you feel strong dwelling in your body. Oh, okay. However, this is not the final victory. The Iron Death Regiment still lurks in the shadows, waiting to make a graveyard out of you. And their mechanical masters from the planet Zeos have yet to reveal their true face. Until the day comes... Until that day... Until the day comes that the evil men are all over, Garbage Field Z most, most continue vigilance. He is a true fighter who can only make fighting for justice. Fight Garbage Field Z for peace of all the world. And true to the narrator's horribly translated words, Garbage Field Z stood against the forces of evil and defended justice for the rest of his days. Of course, you know that it wasn't the intention of leaving the house today. You were supposed to save Christmas for Joel. And you did it. So as nice as this standing might be, it's not a real win. The game is over. You may not insert another quarter to continue, but uh, not sure where this is supposed to go into this thing. Uh, oh well, I've, if you figure it out, remind me and we'll do this thing right up. Okay. Let's do another one. Keep in mind, this, this, this game has 365 uh, different, like, drawn screens. There is so much in this fucking game. Okay. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty extensive, man. Okay, let's just leave the apartment here. Let's travel again, let's travel again. Stop at the post office. We haven't tried this one yet. <laughs> one, one, one a year. No, 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 no. We're gonna finish this. So, game appearance look a year to make too, so you know. You decided that the logical course of action is to simply head to the post office and try to intercept the letter there. All you have to do is go over there and explain what happened, and you should be able to sort this all out. No problem. Ooh. 
Running as fast as your stubborn little legs will carry you, you rush to the nearest post office. Surprisingly, even with the holiday season, the place is particularly a ghost town. A single bored looking clerk is leaning at the front desk, just waiting for you to bother her. No one wanted to disappoint. You step up to the counter. How can I help you? She asks through the middle of a big yawn. You frenetically explain the situation, barely able to keep be able to keep yourself together as you try to hold in your panic and prevent yourself from completely breaking down. I see, the clerk replies, stretching his arms a bit. Well, I'll tell you what I can do for you. Let me just take a look at your computer system and see if I can figure out where the letter may be gone. She turns to her computer and punches in the request. After a few moments of clicking and scrolling, she turns back to you. It appears your friend's letter just left here a little while ago, heading to another facility. Let me just uh, fill out this form there. I ran down the address on there. Just head there and head this to the clerk there. They'll know what to do. Well, it's not just as simple as that, stopping it there, but at least you know where to go to catch it. With the form now in your hands, you kindly thank the clerk was helping you and rush out the door. Following the address to the clerk added to your form, you arrive at the post office in Fusho. Okay. Okay. You rush into the post office, making a beeline straight for the front desk, huffing and puffing. You quickly hand your of official form to the clerk and take a moment to try and catch your breath. However, as you start to feel your heartbeat returning to its normal speed, the clerk chimes in. I'm sorry, sir, but it seems that letter you're looking for just went through for processing. Don't worry, though. I know where it's heading. Let me just uh, jot down the address for you. They're there. If you hurry, you can make it over there. You need time to stop it. Terrific. Looks like you won't have time to relax after all. Uh, go to the next address, I suppose. Or I could give up. No. I'm gonna go to the next address. Come on. Following the address to the clerk, added to form, you arrive to the post office in Minsk. Is this is like... This is like fucking. What's that? That's a game. Luigi's missing. Mario's missing. Sorry, Mario's missing. <laughs> Burst into the doors like Cosmo Kramer. You practically skid to a halt right in front of the post office clerk, waving your arms frenetically and shrieking like a fishwife. What? You slap the form down on the desk and bring and begin rocking back and forth on your feet nervously, waiting to find out if you caught Joel's letter. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, with with how you went up. With what with how wound up you seem to be over all this, says the clerk. But the driver just left with the bundle of mail that got your letter in it. However, I've got all the route here and I can tell you where it's gonna end up if you want to. You nod slightly, and the clerk proceeds to mark down the address of the facility that Joel's letter is bound for. As soon as the pen is off to the paper, you snatch a form up and have a look. Following the address to the clerk and then added to your Form, you arrive to the post office in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. <laughs> you limp into the post office, having just given yourself a real gnarly Charlie horse. You just ran to the corner of the building. Man, don't you hate it when that happens? I sure do. Rubbing your leg muscles and sort of bawling awkwardly as a resu result, you make your way to the service desk and hand, to the, hand the clerk your form. After just a few moments of typing, the clerk looks at you and looks at you and shakes their hand. Unfortunately for you, that letter isn't there. Here, a record show that has already been processed and was just sent back onto the road about five minutes ago. You might as well be get. To <laughs> oh my God, you might be able to get to where it's headed before if you head out right away. Though after all, you're going straight out there while the truck has to make the other stops. They jot down the address on your form and headed to back. Oh my god. Oh well. That's the bad news. On the bright side, at least, you you massage the pain out of your leg muscle. Good thing, too, since you've got more running around to do. It never ends. Fall under the address. The clerk added to, added to your pull form. You arrive at the post office in Sarajevo. <laughs> You rush into the post office, making a beeline straight for the front desk. Huffing and puffing, you quietly hand your official form to the clerk and take a moment to try and catch your breath. However, just as you start to feel your heartbeat return to its normal speed, the clerk chimes in. I'm sorry. So, is it looping? It's... Bora Bora. It's just fucking looping. It's just fucking looping.
Should I just keep pressing anyway? Oh my god. Okay. Hey, it seems like you're having a really bad day, so I really hate to tell you this, but the letter you're looking for has already come and gone, the clerk says. Seems like you got more racing and chasing to do. Oh god. Maybe eventually I can just like... <laughs> it's randomly selected from a list of 50 different city names and showing you one of five different... So, it's pointless. It's pointless. Oh god. It begins to dawn on you that this has turned into a wild goose chase. No matter how fast you go, no matter what path you take, it seems like the mailman is always one step ahead of you. Is this some kind of cruel joke? What did you do to deserve this? Whatever the case, one thing is clear. The tangled web the postal system has woven isn't going to be straightened out by you. It's a Gordian knot, and, and you left your sword at home. You and Jules' letter are separated from one another by a vast yawning, yawning tassum. And now you've run out of ideas and are close to gap. The real kicker is, go is you could have been doing something way more productive with your time than this. Literally any of the other ideas you have probably would have turned out better. However, wasting all this time running all over hell, all over hell and creating during this fiasco is probably going... It's too late to switch gears. Or is it? If the letter is taking this long to actually got delivered, maybe there's still a chance to pull one of... Pull up one of your other ideas, and the gears start turning, and the smile turns to your face. You decide to head back to the apartment and try to start all over again. There's still a chance you can make this happen, and damn it, you're gonna try. With renewed vigor, you, you rush out to the door, and are immediately hit by the mail truck. Shit. Yes, in an ironic twist of fate, the moment you gave up on the trying to catch up on the mail, it seems that the mail caught up to you. Needless to say, it'd be pretty hard to stop the letter with tire tracks across your brain, and so Joel's Christmas was ruined. The game is over. You never reached the secret bonus round. It's a shame because you really could have used the extra bonus round. Return to title is stream. I think the game is starting to corrupt itself now. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, should I reset the game? The game is dying! Thanks! <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. We're gonna do this tomorrow as well. I'm gonna ask you, Zero, if you're in chat. You are in chat, actually. Um, I want to see the I want to see the real ending now. Uh, can you get? Don't tell me exactly what. I'm, but I know I'm supposed to be traveling somewhere. Can you drop another hint? Do it tomorrow? No, I want I want to do it today. But we will do all the other ones tomorrow as well. There are tire tracks in your bag, gonna be hard to read. He's flying to the North Pole? Is it that obvious? Alright. Okay, well... For the best then, check Joel's email and choose him to tell about it later. D then go where Santa is. Oh, okay. Let's not save Christmas at all, fuck it. Gotta do this bit. Thanks. Okay, so... So... The best ending... Checks Joel's email and chooses to tell him about it later. Then go to Santa, okay. You got it. Okay, well... Yeah, yeah. You got it. No, 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 no! Fuck. So, sometimes I, I skip over things and I, I press the wrong thing. I have, a, I have a pixel on my crotch. Okay. Um. Okay, here we go. Website looks great, man. Okay, 
Careful, careful, careful. Careful, careful, careful. There we go. Hey, it's probably better not to answer. It's probably, it's probably better not to answer it yourself. After all, you're not going to be able to actually hold up to any deals you make on Joel's behalf. But you're definitely going to remind him about this later. Okay, let's leave it. Let's make sure that we do this as well. Let's save state on five. And then, uh, here we go. North Pole. And then charter our plane. This has a Takeshi's Challenge vibe to it. I don't know if that's like a, like a like a subconscious decision, but it's got that sort of like brutal death and just chaos feel to it that I love. Then, and anyway, North Pole, there we go. As tempting as it, as tempting as it might be to just go somewhere else and maybe just get Joel something some nice gifts for yourself, you decide it's still best just to go to the North Pole and make things right. You charter a flight to the top of the world and head to the boarding area straight away. After. A <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, the in-flight movie turns out to be one of Christmas classics. Jingle all the way! One of Joel's favorites! Oh, that Arnie, he just can't catch a break, can he? The reminder of all the flights is uneventful. Oh my god. <laughs> and after a few hours of the plane touches down on the runaway, after the planing, you stop to look at the many great souvenirs at the airport, gift shops, and then make a beeline straight for the Santa's workshop. Oh my god, here we go. Finally, you made it. Santa's workshop stands before you. You gaze with awe and a sense of childhood, childlike wonderment, watching as elves hurry around the floor, assembling toys and moving them there and there. It's kind of like a Christmas-themed ant farm, except, you know, elves. Well, Garbage Field, what course of action are you going to take? You got a couple of different options now that you're here. As far as you can figure, you can try and sneak into the mail room and look for the letter. Try and, uh, try and alter the naughty nice list so that Joel is beyond reproach. Or try and find the big man himself. Santa! Sampa! He's probably safe here just in case. Uh. Quietly sneaking around behind the scenes of Santa's hustling, bustling toy factory, you search for the big man himself. After all, who better to approach about this whole mess than the guy in charge of things? Sampa. After poking around for a bit, you finally find jolly old Saint Nick talking to one of his elves. It's kind of an awe-inspiring moment for you, like standing in the presence of something wholly unreal, like Bigfoot or an honest politician. Yet, there he is, a largest life, and it's just as real. You can hardly contain your childlike glee. Now that... Now that you found him, what's the next course of action, Garbage Field? S bl blind Santa? Wh why? I'm saving. I want to see what the hell this is. You suddenly realize that Santa can't read Joel's awful letter if he can't see Joel's awful letter. And considering you found him before the letter, why not just make it so that he'll never see the letter? Of course! How obvious! Clearly this is the greatest ta tactical decision since N Napoleon attacked Waterloo. Silently, you wait for the elf to leave Santa alone. The tension in the air is palpable. And you can feel your throat beating in your throat. Feel your heart beating in your throat. After what feels to you like an eternity, finally elf sees fit to walk away. This is it. The time to strike is now! With cat-like stealth, you sneak into position and fought behind Father Christmas and ready your claws for action. You've only got one shot at this garbage field, so you'd better make the strike count. Calling back on your haunches, you prepare to pounce and then with one mighty leap, you soar towards your jolly holiday prey. Okay, just as you're about to land your attack, suddenly Santa Claus is no longer there. He simply vanished without a trace. As if by magic. Where the hell did he go? You can't very well blind a guy if you can't see him. Uh-oh. Before you have time to figure out what happened, you hear a sound of boots landing on the floor behind you. Glancing back nervously, you see exactly what you feared. You would. A very angry Santa Claus has just teleported behind you. Nothing personnel, kid! He grows with a tone of grim confidence. You scramble to run away, but to no avail. 
You don't even seem to make it a, <laughs> make it an inch before a powerful kick slams into your back, sending you screaming across the, f the room. Moments before, you slam into a brick wall and lose consciousness. You find yourself questioning where this plan went wrong. Probably the part where you try to blind Santa, I'd wager. Why would you even try to attack Santa Claus, the most powerful warrior on the planet Earth? <laughs> okay. How <laughs> how was this even ever going to help you? Even if you succeeded, how would he still be able to deliver gifts without his eyes? What the hell is wrong with you, you shit cat? The quest is over. You are a level 3 ba ba bag boy. You did not join any gills. You perished in level 9 of the Gloomkeep dungeon at the hands of the Lord of Sword. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do that again. Talk to Santa. Trying to contain your awe and wonder at the very sight of Santa, you cautiously approach the big man himself and tug on this coat. To try and get his attention, he turns and looks down at you with a smile on his face. Ho, ho, ho! What have we here? He asks, leaning down to look at you in the face. If it isn't garbage field, then it is Garbagefield, then it's 27's favorite cartoon cat. What brings you to the North Pole? Well, uh, you see, uh, butterflies fluttering about in your stomach. It's about Joel. He sent you a letter and, uh... Oh, yes, Joel Slitzer. He says with a sigh... Oh, says with a sigh and a disappointed shake of the head. He was poised to get a pretty good haul this year before a particular document crossed my desk. Oh, boy, it looks like he already got it. That's gonna make this a whole lot tougher than you thought. Let me guess, says Santa, placing a hand on your shoulder. That boy sent you here to try and convince me that the mean-spirited vitriol he put to paper was a mistake, and he didn't mean it. Well, no, you interject. I, I mean, I, I... He didn't send me. I came on my own because I wanted to help my friend. He really did make a mistake, Mr. Claus. Honest, and you're... And for truly... He, he just had a lot to drink, and he was, well, part of my friend, sir, but... He was just taking the piss. Oh, really? Replies Saint Nick. And what if I'm still not pleased with what he wrote, even if it was a joke? <laughs> what can you say in his defense, Garbage Field? How will you convince me he doesn't belong firmly on the naughty list? Despite this whole trip leading up to this particular happenings, you're not actually prepared with a solid answer to this question. What should you say in Joel's defense? Oh boy. He'll be mad at me. Kinda dumb, but means well. More popular than you. The meaning of Christmas. I'll be your best friend. More popular than you? More popular than Santa? Now, I'm gonna do it the canon way. I wanna see the canon way. Before we do this. Best friend. If this turns into me delivering presents with Santa, I'll be real happy. Oh, come on, you say, clasping your hands together to beg. I'll be your best friend. Garbage Phil, really? This is what you're going to do? Please, 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 you beg. Oh, please, 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 you beg. Fall onto your knees. I'll do anything you want. I promise. I swear. Please, Garbage Field. Santa replies, a growling look on both discomfort and concern on his face. This is beneath you. Have a little self-respect. To hell with self-respect! You grab the bottom of his coat with both hands and stare up to his face. I need this, Santa! I'm begging you to do this for me! I can't, Garbage Field, he says, a tone of finality in his voice. Joel was naughty, and no amount of humiliating begging is going to change that. Now please, go home. Don't make the elves escort you out. Practically crying, knowing full well that you failed to save Christmas, you slowly walk out the door to, sa to Santa's workshop. As you leave, an elf gives you a complimentary bottle of Coca-Cola as a sort of consolation prize. It doesn't help to <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> help you feel any better and make the long trip home utterly miserable. Oh, God damn it! Joel shouts, heading there in frustration. Where are my presents? You sit there watching and feeling awful about it as he stomps around the apartment, checking every nook and cranny as Santa would have honestly le have left the gifts in the closet under the sink. If only to have a backbone, maybe you'd have avoided all of this. Oh, what the hell, he says, reaching into your stocking. You reaching into your stocking. You did get me something. 
you did give me something, but I didn't. He throws it into he throws it to you and gets back to his pointless hunt for lost presents. Quietly, you unwrap the small presents and see what you got. Inside, you find a cassette tape and a note from Santa Claus. Dear Garbage Field. While Joel may not have been a good boy this year, you showed great kindness by coming here and trying to appeal on his behalf. However, your obvious lack of self-respect deeply saddened me, and so I figured you could use this. Glancing at the tape, you see that it is a self-help tape entitled Unleash your, Unleashing Your Inner Lion, How to Be the King of Your Jungle, narrated by Stephen Fry. Judging from the title, you're assuming it's some sort of thing where they... <laughs> it's fucking Simba. <sighs> Use big cat metaphors to help you improve your sense of self-worth. It brings a tear to your eyes to see that Santa truly cares about you. To think that after what a fool you made of yourself, that he'd still, still see fit to try to help you. Joel suddenly clears his throat from behind you. Miley's staring you. Miley's startling you. You turn, you turn to face him. He doesn't look happy. Looks like you must have read that note over your shoulder. So, I didn't get anything, it says. Arms crossed. Because you didn't have the cojones to stand up for me? You, <laughs> the chips were down and you just fucking blew it? Well, uh... He yanks the tape right out of your hands and shakes it in your hand, face. This tape? This right here? This is my gift now. I don't need whatever crap is on here. So I'm gonna use it this... <laughs> this... <laughs> to record the demo for my next album. In honor of your fuck up, Side B is gonna be the spineless cat to ruin everything. And I'm sure it's gonna be a big hit. Well, that's really mean of him. You hope Santa's not You hope Santa's naughty list for next year starts January 1st and not right after Christmas, or else it looks like you'll be having to defend him again. Once more without a spine to keep you upright. Oh man. This guy's a jerk. Groveling and begging like a depressed coward turned out to be the wrong option, and now Joel has done a heel turn and taken from you the one thing that might have prevented it happening again, and that like practically assures you'll have to do this whole thing again next year. You were so close to the a true ending! As a parting gift, please enjoy this copy of Garbage Field Saves Christmas, the VR experience, a truly stunning full 3D game in which anything is possible. Ridiculously expensive VR equipment and a mandatory PC hardware upgrades not included. Oh, man. Alright, let's see that true ending. And I guess I gotta be... Th this is ridiculous. This one is ridiculous. Do you guys wanna see this one before the true ending? Okay. Not to downplay your significance, you say, with a smug grin, but I think Joel is more popular than you. Excuse me. Santa seems generally confused by your statement. I'm just saying, you, you continue. The kids these days know what they like, and... And it's not a jolly chubster with a shaggy beard with a brightly colored suit. They want someone who wants them laugh with jokes about poo poo and pee pee and smunking conky in a goofy voice while laughing himself in a coma at his own antics. He just stands there in a sound disbelief. So, you know, maybe if you... Oh. So, you know, maybe if you give Joel a good haul this Christmas, maybe I can get him to put him in a good word for you. Jolly old Saint Nick doesn't look very jolly at the moment as he stands there, rubbing his b bro in frustration. Weird, it's almost as if, he's, as if in your bold statement really annoyed him or something. But that can't be right, can it? Listen, Garbage Field, he says, leaning in close and putting an arm around you. Let me ask you a very simple question. How many billboards has Joel been on this lifetime? I don't know, you're probably scratching your head. I think maybe he once climbed up onto one Stockholm on a dare. I'm on 32, and that's just in the metro Detroit area alone, Santa s tells you slowly and calmly. How many products bear jokes like this? Let me and you say, uh, scratching your head, I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw some t-shirts on Redbubble featuring a cartoon of his face. Oh, man. Like, there was this one that said, Uncle Joe Place, and... <sighs> Practically every store in the United States d dedicates at least an entire aisle for product with me on them for the last quarter of the year. Every year. For the just about the past hundred years. You know, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't think this argument through. It's probably the, the understatement of the year, but it's all you can think of to say. 
Yes, but you sure didn't. Says Santa, handing you a Coca-Cola that co conveniently had him on it. Now, take the- No, take this Coke home as a parting gift and go home. The next thing you know, you're in the back of the old- <laughs> You're on the coal with the door of Santa's workshop locked behind you. With only an ice cold Coca-Cola to show for your efforts. Well, an effective press agent, you're not. Whatever the case, this was your last chance and you blew it. All you can do now is make your way back home and let the bed bad times roll. Christmas morning comes, and as you expected, there's nothing for Joel below the tree. He stands angrily, he stands there, jaw slack, gesturally angrily at the void for expected gifts. What the fucking shit? Where are my f goddamn presents? <laughs> Forget about that, you say. We need to think about licensing. What the hell are you on about, Garbage Field? <laughs> you know, like... For your image, you say, pulling a chart from your inventory and tapping it with a pointer. Did you know that Santa Claus appears on more billboards in Plano, Texas, than you ever have in your life? This is a big opportunity we're missing here, Joel. You had something to do with this, Joel Groans, didn't you? Enough about how I may or may not have failed to prevent you from ruining Christmas. We've got a real problem on our hands. How to get you a licensing deal to appear on the cans of Pepsi all over the world. I got so mad I glitched out. This is completely idiotic, Garbage Field, he replies, rolling his eyes. I'm gonna go get a nice juicy pizza, and when I get back, you better have made me a nice Christmas gift. He throws on a coat and quickly hurries out the door, slamming it behind him. Moments later, he, it opens again, and he pops his head back in. And it had better come from at heart. I'll be able to tell, damn it. As well as expected, you just weren't up to the job at hand. Garbage Field, you totally biffed. Biffed it with Santa. You have totally bought it with Joel's, and now you may have less than an hour to make a genuine, heartfelt gift for Joel. Or else you're probably gonna throw out a fit. Oh well, I guess it's time to get out the macaroni and glue. You are so close to the true ending. As a parting gift, please enjoy Garbage Field Saves Christmas, the Hallmark original movie starring Colin McCarthy as Santa, Bobcat, Gold Devat as Garbage Field. And featuring TV's David Faustino as Joel Jarvison. Wow. Let's see that true ending. The meaning of Christmas. I just wanted to help my best friend, you say with a sigh. Sometimes he might not treat me right, sure. He might not always recognize how much I love him. Regardless, he still deserves nice things. Isn't that what the spirit of Christmas is all about, Santa? Giving off yourself to bring kindness and joy to the people you love that's all that I want to do now bring joy to my best friend and as for that letter sure it might be mean spirited he said some pretty rude things about you in it and I understand you're being upset by that but you have to think about the context he wrote it in what was he doing when he wrote it he was live on Twitch streaming some goofy shit for Christmas. Or is he reading this or whatever? Some goofy shit for Christmas for an audience or thought sense. Do you think he was doing it for the money, for the attention? Oh, it was Garfield. It was Garfield saying it, sorry. No, he, do he does it for the same reason that he brought me here. He wants to make people happy, sure. That ad revenue is nice. And yes, he's having fun, but he wouldn't bother if he weren't knowing it. <laughs> Don't for the don't audience out there whose lives are just a little bit less less terrible. Thanks for his antics. People <laughs> tell him that all the time how he's helped them get out of a slump and it made them laugh during a hard time in their lives or just put a big goofy smile on their face. And he's always glad to hear it. He cares, Santa. He really does. At this point in your speak, you start you start to feel the tears coming. Your emotions are getting the better of you. <sighs> Try as you might to keep a strong facade up. I I don't know where I'd be without him either. You know, always bumbling around and messing the things up with my panic and my flights of fantasy. Where would I be without somebody like Joel to ground me in reality when things are at the worst? Tearfully, you look right into Santa's eyes. If you can't fight it in your own heart to forgive him, then I'm going to t tell you what I'm going... Can I read? Then I'm going to tell you what my one and my only Christmas wish is. Whatever you were going to give it to me, give it to him. The only thing I really want for Christmas is to see his smiling face. 
Aww. Santa wipes a tears from his eye and then leans in from you, leans in to you and gives you the warmest, most genuine hug you've ever felt in your life. Somehow this this only makes you more emotional and you sob openly into his shoulder. He pats you on the back to comfort you. Garbage, garbage field, he says, still consoling you. Your words are so genuine and your heart is so big. You believe yourself to be a coward for fearing Joel's misguided answer, anger, and a weakling for showing your feelings to me, but you're not. <laughs> Aww. Not just anyone would drop what they're doing and rush to the North Pole is to try and help their friend. No matter how much they mean to them, that you would come here all by yourself shows courage. And some people hide their emotions away, keeping away, keeping out of sight to fear that others will judge them if they see. For you to be so open with them in front of the ver veritable face of judgment shows that you're strong. But most of all, Garbage Field, you're right. Joel has, is a good boy. <clears throat> most of the time, anyway. He might have said some naughty things in this letter, but he did while doing something nice in front of so many people. Don't you worry, he says. Finally standing up, Joel will get his Christmas, and so will you. As for that letter, I'll just tear it up and forget it ever happened. Just do me a favor, will you? Yes, Santa. Next year, hide the liquor when the holiday hits, okay? You snort, and as Santa begins laughing his jolly trademark laugh, ho, 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 ho. you can't help but laugh along with him. Then, with one less hug and a compliment bottle of Coca-Cola, he sends you on your way back home with a warmth in your heart. Christmas morning. True to his word, Santa delivered gifts to for both... <laughs> Guys, you don't have to do that, thanks. <laughs> for both Garbage Phil and Joel, Christmas morning came and so did... Two did the time for opening presents. While Joel is thinking about where to start, you reach into your heart to your stockings to see what you got. Curiously, after pulling out various little bags of chocolates and a new toothbrush, you find an envelope at the bottom of your stocking. As you expected, it says it's a f it's from Santa. You quickly tear it open and see what it has got to say. Oh, jeez, guys. Dear Garbage Field, I thought... I thought a lot about what you said about to me at North Pole and the other day, particularly all about how all you wanted was to see Joel smile. After some consideration, I came up with something that I think you're going to love. I hope it makes your holiday just a bit more merry. With love, Santa Claus. As you finish reading your letter, you glance up and see that Joel has finally grabbed a present and sat down on the floor to open it. <laughs> However, it seems there was an envelope attached to this gift as well. What What the hell? Ask, well, I'm not swearing. What the heck? Asked Joel, raising an eyebrow. Did Santa write me a letter? That's a fucking weird... Casually tearing up the envelope open, he pulls the letter out. Unfolding it, it looks like Santa's got a lot more to say to him than he did to you. Seems pretty long. Dear Joel, there's something that you need to be made aware of. You were very close to not getting a Christmas this year. You may not remember it well, but while drunkenly streaming, the other day you wrote an awful letter to me I haven't forgotten, forgotten by the next day sent it to me. I was fully prepared to put you on an naughty list. In fact, I did. And you'd still be there were it not for your little friend Garbage Field. He came all the way to the North Pole just to ask my forgiveness on your behalf. I was skeptical, but he made an argument that moved me. He told me about how much you love making other people happy through your streaming, how you always smile when you hear about another person whose bad day got better when they watch one of your videos. He told me that even though you don't always treat him nice, and that he doesn't, he, he don't seem to recognize how much he cares about you, that he'd rather have me giving you anything I was planning to leave him for Christmas because all he needed was to see your smile. I hope that you has praised all that he did for you this year, Joel. That boy came to the North Pole all by himself just to find me and he poured his heart out just to make sure you'd get presents. To say nothing of the many, many terrible and dangerous things he could have been tried to do instead, he considered everything, from the breaking into a haunted house, to scoring the Gobi Desert, which I haven't done yet, to find you to the perfect gift. He was, he was willing to risk him very life just for you. He loves you, Joel. 
All he wants to do... I bet that Gobi Desert shit is like... Paris to Car Alley, but whatever. All he wants to be... Your best friend, and to see you be happy. Do what you will with this information, as I can't very well tell you how to feel. But I thought you need to know. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Love, Santa Claus. By the time he finishes reading a letter from Santa, he's visibly crying, settling down and wiping the tears from his eyes. He walks over and sits down by you on the couch. Garbage feel, he says, sniffling. I... I never knew how much you really cared about me. I kind of just thought about, you know, you were just hanging around to annoy me. What? No way, you reply, honestly surprised. I never do that, Joel. You're like the coolest guy I know. Hanging out with you is a blast, even on days where you're cranky and mean. Santa told me everything, and man, what did I, what did I do to serve you, Garbage Field? I'm just some idiot who makes pee-pee poo-poo jokes while playing video games on the internet. I'm like a fucking garbage can with googly eyes glued to it. Hey, that's what makes you cool. You're just a regular guy like anyone else. And yet every every week you spend a few hours just making, having fun and making people smile. There's nobody else I'd rather live with. Garbage field, I'm sorry I've been so mean to you in the past. You're not a shit cat. You're my best friend. Aw, Jolene, Jolene's in and gives you a big hug, bursting a dam in your brain and flooding it with serotonin. You hug him back right in from ear to ear. Now come on, Garbage Field, he says, springing to his feet. Let's open our presents. As the two of you sit there on the living room floor, tearing, wrapping paper from gift boxes like excited school children, your heart feels like warm and bright. While you share and compare your respective halls, laughing and enjoying each other's company, one thing is certain, this is the happiest you've ever been in your life. Joel had never quite liked Garbage Field, but with a little bit of Christmas magic, all the... All of that changed forever. The two newfound friends became inseparable, even going so far to stream together time to time. And so, to borrow a time-worn turn of phrase, they lived happily ever after. A Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night. What oh, shit. What a game. I'm so happy I did this on Christmas Day. <laughs> oh man. There we go. Damn. There's a lot of games in here. Alien 3, Back to the Future, Battle Mania, Battle Toads, Bonanza Bros. Oh my god, look at all these credits, man. This is the true ending, by the way. We're gonna do all the other endings too tomorrow. You know, Fantasy Stone, Flintstones, Ghostbusters, Ghouls and Ghosts, Hokidono, I haven't seen that one yet. Jungle Book, Last Action Hero, Lethal Weapon 3, Master of Darkness, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, did that one, Ninja Gaiden, not th that one. Popeye, Predator 2, Prince of Darkness, uh, Prince of Persia, sorry. Rocky, I think I heard Rocky before actually, but uh, X-Men and... Damn, and Cheese Wars did some too, huh? All our... Uh, uh, all the composers of Sega games where they work, you have to think of a word game and this is enough power for this has to make a business. But you got help with this? You had to tell people, hey, I'm making a game for this shithead, man. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Alright, everyone is the stress and the Joel Jarvis said for originally creating garbage field and inspiring this mess. After the holiday season was over, Garbage Field reminded Joel about that email he'd gotten. Curious, he read it and decided he was interested in Ian's proposition. They did a stream together and it was hilarious for all involved. This post credit st stinger isn't canon, but it could be with Joel's help. It would be absolute. It would absolutely make this my best Christmas ever if it say yes to me. Ah. Thank you very much for playing. This product took over a year of working on on and off. So I hope you had as much fun playing as I had making it. Or, well, more fun. This was a headache at times. Ah, uh, shit. Well, uh, never say never, man. Uh, yeah, I, I'll be down to clown. I'll be down to clown. Possibly, possibly not tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, definitely not a no. Uh, I'll say yes. I'll say yes. But, um, uh, Probably, 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 maybe, maybe even the year ends? I, I don't know. We'll see. 
but uh, absolutely. Well, shit, that's great. That is great. Uh, but man, garbage field saves. What a fucking game! This is probably the, like one of the best fan games I've ever played. Honestly, just absolutely amazing, really. Well, wow. is the stream cut out? Uh, Are we back here? Are we back here? Are we back here? Oh, we are back. Okay, I was just saying, I don't know if Sierra heard me, but I say, yeah, absolutely, I'll be down. I'll be down to climb for sure. Uh, this this game was fantastic. We haven't even seen all the endings, all the paths, and all that. I did a really bad job reading all this tonight because I I just woke up. But that's kind of the essence of Christmas, is it not? You know. Uh, <laughs> But this was a real treat. This is probably, if not the best fan game I've ever played. Um, it's just so fucking good. So fucking good. Um, loved it. I loved it. Uh, just serious killer stuff. And I'm so glad I did this on Christmas because that ending was just perfect for it. You know, it's so perfect. But this was, this was a treat. This had so much humor. And again, I haven't even seen all the endings and stuff. So, you know. But. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'll get in, I'll get in contact for sure. But uh, you know, I'm super happy about this. This is awesome. Great job. And uh, we'll do more tomorrow. We'll do all the other endings tomorrow for sure. Hopefully, this time schedule or time slot is like okay for you because you know I want you around for for when I stream it. But uh, yeah, this this was awesome. And uh, thank you so much for sending it to me. Thank you so much for making me this incredible game. I think me and Chad we had a blast playing through it. And uh, you know, uh, I, w I wish more, more. There was more fi vine sauce games like this. That was just of of this biblical quality because this was a treat, and it was done on Sega Master System too. Like you could have done this in like I don't know some other engine, but you chose to do this in in a very uh, archaic game engine. So that's pretty pretty amazing. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna call it here. Uh, this was a this was a fantastical treat. Garbage Field saves Christmas, and I. I loved it. I loved it. Well, once again, so, sorry for the sloppy, sloppy reading because I, again, I just woke up. I still have like sand in my eyes, quote unquote. But uh, yeah, but tomorrow we'll do uh, the Christmas DOS games instead with this stuff, and we're gonna do a Christmas giveaway as well. But uh, this was a this was a true treat. This was a true treat, and I highly, highly enjoyed it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna do the art. Let's see here. Um, uh, wait, what shit? What did I least la least la leave off? I'm gonna consult my own stream here. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna consult my own stream. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I left off at this. Okay. Got to double check with yourself sometimes, you know. From uh, Guz, here's an evil Varg friend. He's drinking cock. And he's from Norway, so, you know. New new, new emote? New emote? <laughs> uh, <laughs> new King Gear. That's pretty funny. Kendra Tail did this. Here's me playing Habbo. Pee pee poo poo gamer. You, you know, you know, I gotta say, there was a guy uh, during Habbo Tail stream that kept begging for me to unban him. So we checked the logs of the guy who got banned. Guess what? He was never banned. <laughs> he just wanted to tell everybody to be unbanned. Zephyr, wasn't that right? Like, like we, we tracked that guy down and asked him, like, what the fuck? Like, I, I didn't, like, ban him. Like, I, I didn't do shit. And, like, like I, I don't know, man. But instead of contacting mods, he, like, sat for years and asking me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. But I, I guess it was just a joke. I don't know. But you can't escape from us, Joel Baba. Hi, Joel. Really enjoyed your Habbo Tale stream. So, I import so, I, so important, I created this horrible art. Hope you enjoy. Oh, I love it. Look at that deal. <laughs> Uh, this was this was Sierra Diamond, and I, again, this is tonight's stream. So um, there you go.
this is this was tonight's game funnily enough so hey there you go dorms did this breaking news swedish man chased through Habba hotel by crowd of rabid chat members vars yell was respected pepsi pepsi gamer gamer <laughs> oh man that's great that's great would you guys like a second have hotel stream because that's a lot of fun i was going to do as a one-off but i think a lot of people really did enjoy that you know yeah yeah, yeah. i'll be i'll be down i'll be down to clown man <sighs> from this light uh, here's swedish crimbo with friend it's christmas it is christmas it's especially america it's christmas for, for for us yesterday so christmas is over for me for me but for you guys it's like you guys opening presents in the morning right Yes. Sheet. It's Christmas. Oh, ho, ho. nice art. From which dagger is a really cool piece of art. Check this out. It's a Crimbo Vogue Shroom. Uh, while some people enjoy listening to your streams and fall asleep, they kept me awake to pull some all nighters during finals weeks. Thank you, base. Thank you, base Joel and Mary Crimbo. Well, I appreciate that. That's really, really cool. I like that. I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I have those Christmas lights like right now in my apartment. You know what? You know what makes me a little sad? Taking down Christmas ornaments because I don't want to put that shit down because it's, 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 it, it decorates the apartment nicely, you know? I don't want to put that. Keep, keep that around. Fuck it. Dude. Just leave it. Can't, can't, make me, can't make me turn that shit down. You know? <laughs> Great art. Great art. I love the I love the the animation of the the cape, especially. That's really good animation. Really, really well. A chilly image. Right. That's really, really well done. I love it. Really, really, really cool. Damn. Awesome job. Really, really awesome job. Thank you so much, Witch Dagger. I really, really, really like that. Awesome job. Awesome job. Mary P did this. Is this animated? I don't think so, but hey, look at that, Mary Crimbo. It's it's a little shroom, some lights, friend with a gift, and a raccoon eating my Santa beer. That's adorable. Ah, <laughs> double beard. Ah. Hey, Joel, it's been a while since my last upload. Hope you like it. I wish you a Merry Crimbo and hope Chad gets to drink hot cocoa. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's adorable. That is adorable. There, there there's something because. In Sweden, we have this tradition on Christmas that we watch these Disney shorts. All of Sweden does this. It's super, super tradition. Look it up. Sweden Donald Duck tradition. Right. And they show Robin Hood, like a cut, cut version of Robin Hood. And I've never seen the full version of Robin Hood, but there's a scene that makes me laugh every time. It's where they, Robin Hood is putting all the animals on this like big, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the, 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 the wheelbarrow, whatever. Um, and all these animals around all, and the, and then he, there's there's raccoons that are dressed as prisoners, little prison outfit. I love that. That shit cracks me up. Okay. Okay. All right. Very nice art. Thank you so much, girl. I'm here. Santa. Oh God, I gotta do. Uh, I gotta do more Mary Gear Solid. Uh, tonight, technically, so yeah, Ugh. that's really good. Sienna, <laughs> excellent job, love it. Draw Mary did this. Yo, is that is that is that gingerbread? It is gingerbread. Hey, Joel, I was making a Chris Christmas cookies today, and I couldn't resist making a cookie friend. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. We don't really do cook Christmas cookies. We just do gingerbread, and we do like, but the 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 white stuff. We don't really do it in Sweden. We, we used to do it like this. Hang on. Our, our, Chris, our Christmas uh, Christmas cookies look like this. We just we just we just kind of do this. This is the Swedish style, but that that's really cool. That's really cool. I like it a lot. <laughs> I hope it, I hope it tastes good. It doesn't taste like a mouthful of razor blades. <laughs> Excellent job. Thank you so much. Captain's Rod did this. 
it's me in the uh it's actually uh, from the um people's playground stream and it's funny because you know like that was stream was done in september and Cybertruck was like unveiled in november and I forgot to upload the stream, and I, I predicted that shit. I was like, I was putting Elon Musky Tusk in the car, and I'm like, haha, look, it's Elon's car or whatever. And then suddenly, ooh. But uh, maybe more people's playground at some point, but that's really awesome. Looks like we're time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> I like that bulk too. It's pretty good. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, like the this. Here's some super zit art. Yes! Yes! You said go a while with the art, so I did. Uh, by the way, the colors of the computer looked darker, warmer. So when I was drawing it, uh, draw from Photoshop, I was looking more. It was looking more lively. But when I uploaded to the internet, it, the colors became lighter. Oh, really? Okay. Looks pretty good. Here's the uh, the cats. Here's Zuper. <laughs> it's got a weird face, but I like it. That game is fucking crazy. I love it. Too. Very nice. And from Spalumpkin. Here we go. Here's here's Garbage Feeling Friend. It was an amazing stream with such an amazing game. I had very I have a merry, merry, merry crimbo with these two best friends. Absolutely. You know it. You know it. Well, that's the art for today. There's going to be more Christmas stuff uh, tomorrow, technically on your American Christmas Day. There's going to be gift giveaways. Uh, I, went, I want to remind you once again. Um, you can just stay in chat when I'm doing the giveaway. Uh, and it's just going to be games given out. It's going to be a raffle system. And, you know, I I, 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 I appreciate all the, the subscriptions and stuff to me and all the gift stuff. But, uh, I'm again, like every year, I'm letting everyone have a chance. You don't need to be in chat. You don't need to give me anything. I give you stuff. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to give games out, like Fallout and the... Uh, and uh, some some little fun little packages I've made together, like little personal packages, you know. Maybe some songs I'm giving out to the winners. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, that's a stream. I hope you all enjoyed. That was a real treat. Thank you so much once again to Zero X Diamond. Um, fucking awesome game, and I can't wait to play more of it tomorrow. But yeah, tomorrow we're gonna do some more Christmas DOS games. We might do some Christmas stories. We might do some. Whatever it might be, but it's going to be a long stream tomorrow. This is more of an impromptu thing, really, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Tip of the day is, uh, no, tip at all. Just Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, whatever, whatever religious holiday it is. Uh, happy holidays, you know. Hope you have a good day. If you're not having a good day, I hope that your day gets better. Uh, eat some meat. If you don't eat meat, eat a carrot <laughs> yeah, I don't know for real though I uh, hope you have a good good Christmas I had a good Christmas yesterday and uh, all the best all the best you know but uh, yeah anyway I'm gonna see us live on Vine Sauce and go host them uh, I've been very hungry this stream by the way because I've been thinking about the Christmas food that's left over and I have this I have this batch of like creamy potatoes and I'm gonna put in the oven and I'm like oh yeah 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 Anyway, we got uh, who is live? Uh, I'm almost Vigibum. He's streaming some spooky Santa games. Check that out. But yeah, check back tomorrow for more Christmas stuff. Once again, thanks for Cyrix Diamond for putting this amazing game together. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Beer tomorrow for Christmas giveaway shit. Show up and boom. And tomorrow there might even be a Christmas vineyard with some Christmas movies that I enjoy. So a lot of games and stuff and all that stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. See you around. And y'all stay safe. Peace out. <laughs>